it's time for some Friday Night Lights. It's the National Sport of Texas, the premium grade blend of Scholastic Sports in America, Texas High School football playoff style, Cedar Park and Angleton. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Waller, Texas, just west of Houston and Waller Stadium. Our fourth appearance in Waller and the third in this stadium, all playoff encounters. We beat Richmond Foster here just last year in this same second round. Tonight, the Timberwolves face the traditionally strong Wildcats from Angleton. You're listening live on the Vibe Network. We've been broadcasting Cedar Park football under various name changes since 2008. This is our 175th game. I'm the so-called V of the T, Brad Cohn, and I'll have the play-by-play tonight. Joining me with color and analysis tonight and also filling in for Cecil Kokenauer on technical production is the very busy Lifetime Timberwolf, Josh Willer. And any time I get an opportunity to be busy is always a good thing for Josh. Any time Josh is idle is never a good situation. So very happy to be on the road with the V of the T. Always fun to make these road trips together and the conversations on the road. So just very fortunate to be here broadcasting this program here in the second round of the playoffs. And just, uh, wow, what an opportunity for this Cedar Park program to win 5-5 five and five to find a way to get to the third round. Are you kidding me? Could be. Josh and I hosted the state champion women's basketball team as our guests on Timberwolf Night in America Tuesday night from Santa Catarina. We had a great visit with all the girls and three of their coaches. The head coach, Donnie Ott, assistants, J.R. Romero and Cammie Williamson, plus the V of the L team, Mike Rose, and players, Reese Merrill, Angie Sacco, G. Mall, and all state center, Shelby Hayes. They are already 7-0, and ranked number one in the state in every poll. They are playing tonight, as a matter of fact. Join Josh and me this coming Tuesday night, November 23rd, from 7.30 to 9, where our guests will be the captains from the defending national champion cheer squad. We'll have that show win or lose tonight. This will be the first game between Cedar Park and Angleton in any of the major sports. The uh, Wildcats 7-3 and three in the regular season, finishing fourth in District uh, 13-5A. Their 34-18 win over one-seed Friendswood in the first round last week was considered an upset. They started out great with uh, wins over Stafford, Aleve Taylor, Houston Milby, something called Houston Wisdom, and then Rosenberg Carey, and the level of competition tightened up. They lost three of their last five, falling to Fort Ben Hightower, Manvel, and Katie Pato, sandwiched around wins over Richmond Foster and Fort Ben Kempner. Some of the wins have been very close. A one-point win over Foster, two-point win over Stafford, another two-point win over Kempner. Their first round game against Friendswood was touch and go the whole time until Angleton pulled away in the last three minutes, sort of like our game with Weiss. This is a team that senses that Cedar Park is in the midst of a kind of a down season, and they are chomping at the bit to bite off a chunk of the Timberwolves, Josh. Yeah, I mean, this Angleton team is historically great in the in the state of Texas, and they come from a very powerhouse area in the state. So they play competitive football all year round, and, you know, they've had great seasons where they've won district and now this is a down season for them. So that's what I had an opportunity to get on the field while these guys were warming up. Do you think this Angleton team respects the Cedar Park Timberwolves? Absolutely not. I feel like this is a team that feels like they're destined to go on and move on from this round because they haven't experienced that Cedar Park, you know, tenacity that they bring to the table. And so for these two powerhouses to be matched up in the second round, it really, you know, makes for a very interesting and exciting game. And you just got to, you know, Cedar Park control what you can control don't worry about the opposing team and just buy into the game plan and hopefully good things happen but this Angleton Wildcat team I mean they've gone through ups and downs this entire season but they're here in the second round so they're not bad yeah and you're you're right like Johnson in the first round a team we've never played before so they haven't seen us with our glorious past no reason to get afraid of our logo or our name and they're going to bring it Cedar Park stumbled into the playoffs on the heels of two straight fourth quarter collapses, but last week they did a lot of things very right in what turned out to be a double overtime win on the road at Buda Johnson. Timberwolves actually controlled every stat in this game, and the necessity for overtime was only caused by four Cedar Park turnovers and four sure touchdown passes that were not completed. There were actually five, but we scored on that drive anyway. 28 points were left on the field. 
and the four turnovers gave Johnson extra possessions they wouldn't have normally gotten. Outside of those eight critical plays, Cedar Park actually played an inspired game and could rightfully have won by four or five touchdowns over a 9-1 team. And, and Cedar Park, that's what we were worried about in that first round matchup as Cedar Park coming in as a lower seed versus a higher seed. Which Cedar Park team would we get off of the bus? And we got the right Cedar Park team off the bus immediately last week on the road against the Johnson Jaguars, especially from the Black Rain and their ability to contain and bottle up that quarterback, uh, Jesse Medina from the Johnson Jaguars. And so for offensively for us to leave so many points on the board, as as bad as that hurts and as close as that game was, as the Cedar Park community, we always emphasize what we can improve on in the next game. And if we're leaving points on the board, well, we got to capitalize that going into the next week. And again, in the second round of the playoffs, everyone's good. If you think you can leave points on the board, <laughs> you are severely mistaken because this is Texas high school football and absolutely no one respects you when you get into the playoffs. So you've got to be able to prove it in finished drives ending in touchdowns. Cedar Park and Angleton on the road tonight in Waller. It is round two of the state playoffs. Cedar Park's 14th consecutive postseason trip. The program is 42 and 14 all time in postseason games. That's more than five and a half seasons worth of playoff games for this remarkable football program. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Cedar Park Football on the Vipe Live Network. Bank, formerly Washington Federal. Working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafed Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposit, over 32,000 ATMs. Free checking. Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800 324 9375. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Ralph. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. So why do teenagers play high school sports? My reason why is a sense of purpose. My reason why is to inspire others. One reason student athletes seldom mention is to get an athletic scholarship. They know that only 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. So why do they play? My reason why is friendship. Tell us your reason using the hashtag MyReasonWhy. This message presented by the NFHS and the Texas University Interscholastic League. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Box Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school means back to sports. And from graphic tees to football cleats, they have everything that you need to make this your best year yet. 
Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com and you can find all the hottest styles from your top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans all at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. And welcome back to the pregame show here from Waller, Texas with the V of the T in the Willard of Oz. And once again, Sponsors are Toyota of Cedar Park, HEB, Rudy's Barbecue, Army Ant Movie, Monkey Real Estate, Wofford Bank, Touchdown Sponsors, TJ Lewis Real Estate, Alzer's Barbecue, and Santa Catarina Mexican Restaurant, where Josh and I host Timberwolf Night in America every Tuesday night. Cedar Park playing tonight for a berth in round three of the state playoffs, the Region 3 semifinals next week against either Katie Pato or Maynard. Both very tough teams, like Johnson when we faced them last week. Angleton here has a major weapon of quarterback that we have to shut down to win. Well, and that's their quarterback, sophomore Adrian Ewells, who will take over and win 70 for 114 for 989 yards. Oh, come on, give him 11 more yards, please. <laughs> uh, for 12 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. The top receivers are Karrion Bonabe Goins with 43 catches for 566 yards and 5 touchdowns. Also, A.J. Ryan with 24 catches for 483 yards and a whopping 20.1 average per catch with four touchdowns logged as well. In the ground game, it's going to be junior Deshaun Thomas. He's got 108 carries, 668 yards, and a healthy 6.2 average per tote with 10 touchdowns. And quarterback Ewells, the sophomore, is their second leading rusher with 95 carries for 361 yards, only a 3.8 average in five touchdowns. Our first football game ever against Angleton. We did beat them once in a baseball playoff series several years ago. And Angleton has a 1-0 record at the GUP. About five Whoa. years ago, LISD hosted a regional semifinal on a Saturday. And I was on the stadium mic for that one because we had played the night before somewhere in our playoff game. Angleton won in a high-scoring shootout. This season, the Wildcats average 31.4 points per game. And they give up 23.5. Cedar Park averages 29.9 giving up 28.5. Current weather for Waller, Texas, 52 degrees dropping into the mid-40s by game's end. 46% humidity wind from the north, the left at 9 miles an hour. But, you know, I'm looking at the flags. I think that weather report is old enough to be wrong. The ribbons hanging from the uh, uprights, the goalposts, are just barely moving, so hardly any wind at all. Yeah, not much wind to work with here tonight, and that's a big change from last week against the Johnson Jaguars on the road. Uh, there was a stiff wind all night, and even the opposing kicker kicked a nice 47-yarder into a wind uh, to really put Cedar Park on the ropes. And uh, with no wind tonight, you got to think the offensive playbook is not only open for the Timberwolves, it's also open for the Wildcats. Both teams have taken the field now, the color guard for uh, the National Guard students coming in from the south, the right, towards midfield. They're almost there with the Texas flag and the American flag. Again, no video tonight. It's not a problem with your laptop or anything. Uh, Booster Club had had to pay about $1,000 extra a game, kind of an extortion fee to the UIL to take video into the playoffs.
I'm really, you know, feeling that this Cedar Park team is is really going to come out ready to swing. I do too. Timberwolves are going to send their captains out. Their captains this year, they only get to send four per UIL rule. But they elected uh, about eight or so. Here they are this year. Any, any four of these guys could go out there. Cody Marshall, Kevin Adams, Josh Bell, Jake McAnally, Cole Valiente, Connor Mason, Ian Ferguson, Murray Robinson. And as I'm looking there, it looks like we've got Cody Marshall, Murray Robinson, Josh Pell, Kevin Adams, and who is that? Oh, so it's a number that hasn't been listed as a captain before. It's Luke Kuharski. I mean, you see your captains, and when you start running through the list, and it's just incredible that we're here in the second round of the playoffs. It's just seniors that we've been calling for a long time now. Cody Marshall, Weapon X, and Big Murr. Murray Robinson, Connor Mason, and Ian Ferguson out there on the middle, and we do have some captains out back, but those four that we just named, Cody Marshall, Murray Robinson, C Connor Mason, and Ian Ferguson, I mean, all of them, instant, you know, effectors on this Cedar Park program when they came in on the scene, I mean, three out of four of those were as a sophomore, and then Cody Marshall last year on that historic state championship run was laying the lumber as a safety, so for him to just be completely versatile. It looks like Angleton is going to defer. Yep, Angleton the toss. The toss so will defer. We will receive we'll those soft bound left to right across your laptop keyboard. And what an opportunity because I got a chance to go on the field and talk with Cole Valiente and who went out with a nasty ankle injury in that Pflugerville game. And as a senior center who was on that state championship run last year, I mean, he came up to me on his little scooter and his cowboy hat and his letter jacket saying, I'm still coaching. I mean, I'm going to watch the trenches, and I'm going to make sure I got my guys coached up, ready to go. That's that's the Cedar Park mentality that we've been trying to teach and influence for decades after. I was talking to his parents not long ago, and they mentioned that aspect of what Cole's being now encompasses. And that he said right away when he realized he wasn't playing anymore, he's going to be another coach. And uh, they really admired that in him. So and, and so do we. I think Cedar Park's keys for this game, Josh, are just like last week on defense. No missed tackles. Keep them in front of you. On offense, keep the turnovers down and no dropped passes. You know, I think we do those three things, four things. Uh, we have a win. Yeah, I think it's an easy recipe for a, a win right there for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. If you just capitalize and do the easy things, my goodness. I mean, we'd be in the state championship every single year, and that's been the struggle with this team in particular, is making those open field tackles on the black rain side and forcing them into third downs. We've gotten them into third downs per se, but then forcing them out of that third down to where we can get off the field and get our offense on the field just hasn't happened a lot. An interesting kicking formation. Yeah, and they switch out of that. There's big gaps where the hash marks are, pretty much. Everybody's on either side. Let's see what they do. we got two guys back around on the nine-yard line, deep. And this kick will go at least that far, perhaps into the end zone. Caught at the one. And going to come straight up the field. And a little bit of a hole. He gets, oh, and the last man got him at about the 35. And that was Gavin Chapa. The sophomore that was caught up from the JV getting his opportunity on the special teams unit on the first play of the game. 33% of the plays are going to happen on the special team side of the ball. So if you get your chance to be caught up from the JV unit to be on the varsity level, you've got to be effective and make your name known. And Gavin, my goodness, that's how you nice get on the job. scene right there. 32-yard return from the 1 to the 33. In the middle of the hash mark, Cedar Park, third of the field already behind him. Three receivers to the left. One to the right, Adams in the backfield with Pell. Comes up to the line to change something, looks to the sideline. Cedar Park, the home teams are looking towards us. Dark green jerseys, white numbers, black pants, the black helmet with the green and silver and black logo. And here's the snap. Give to Adams, right to the left guard and a hole. Stiff arms the guy, still running. Kevin Adams all the way to midfield. First down, Timberwolves, 17 yards on the gain. A great job by Kevin Adams navigating through traffic and then dishing that nasty stiff arm on the Woo! linebacker to get that big first down. Quickly to the line. Play action pass to the right side, completed about the 45 and run out of bounds. It's somewhere like the 43. That's going to be a gain of seven to Grant Nichols, second down. Mr. Reliable, as of last game from the Johnson Jaguars game, a big reception on first down to give a second and short. Back to the line, Adams right up the center 
Yeah, still pushing, still pushing. Adams inside the 40, all the way down to about the 40, uh, 38 yard line. First down, gain of five. Cedar Park first and 10 inside of the Wildcats territory and still not forced into a third down. We're moving with pace. I love this opportunity from the offense to start the game uh, with a big, big possession. Two receivers left, one right. Slot left comes in motion now to the right and his slot right. Snap. Rolling left is Pell. Looking. Can't find anybody. He's going to go ahead and run down the sideline. He's going to get out to maybe the 33 or so. That's going to be a gain of five. Second down. A shout out to Grant Nichols. He was the tight end in the flats, and he was trying to get open off of his man, but when he saw Josh Pell start to tuck that ball and run, he immediately turned and blocked his man, gave Pell an opportunity to get five. Spread formation again. Two receivers right, one left. Adams gets the give to the left side. Black. Flag down. Adam still oh. dragging people. He's going to get another five yards right to the first down marker, but let's see what the flag is. Flag is on our sidelines. So that'll be interesting. It looks like it might be an offsides on the defense from the way he motioned it, so mm. it might be a free play, um, but with the second and five, we'll get the automatic first. I just saw the preliminary indication from the referee. He is saying offsides on the defense. So did Kevin get more yards <laughs> than the offense would get on the penalty is the question. Yeah, Kevin Adams, he was right at the sticks, maybe just short, so take the penalty yardage and the free play to move the sticks. But Kevin Adams, my goodness, he worked hard for those four and a half yards. That he doesn't even <laughs> get credit for. <laughs> That's not fair. We'll add him to his career total. So five yards on the penalty gives us the first down, the third of the game. Back to the line. Two running backs now back there with Pell, one on either side of him. Let me give. It looks like Cody Marshall trying to get around the left side. He's hit behind the line for a loss of a couple back to the 29. Yeah, not much going right there. A good job by the Angleton Wildcats, specifically number eight, Joseph McCray, the sophomore defensive back that came just screaming up on Cody Marshall. That took just a little too long to get out there. I'm not sure I like the design of that play. Oh, he's taking the single formation back. up top. Three, Four receivers right now, single to the left. Pell throws down the middle to the end zone to Cody Marshall. Catch at the one into the end zone for the touchdown. 29-yard touchdown strike. Pell to Weapon X. Well, Josh Pell, he saw the single coverage with Kevin Adams going motion out of the backfield, and I thought it was going to go left side to the single coverage, but why not take Weapon X out of the slot? Weapon X absolutely dominating his man, getting him on his back hip, and Josh Pell throwing him open into the end zone. That was a beautifully executed play and a beautifully executed first possession. On for the extra point now to hold a marshal is Raylan Barr. Snap, hold, kick, gets through, and it's good. 10-14, less than two minutes into the game. 7 nothing Timberwolves. We'll be right back. Do you consider yourself a football fan or a high school sports fan? The word fan comes from the word fanatic. The Hewlett's are fans of many things, including local sports. Hewlett Volkswagen and Don Hewlett Chevrolet are proud to be a part of helping student athletes grow into young adults. If you're a fan of great customer service, a huge selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs, then come see us. Hewlett Volkswagen and Don Hewlett Chevrolet Buick, I-35 at the Western House exit in Georgetown. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulence. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. All right, welcome back. That drive about 67 yards, 61 of it in total offense, some of it in penalty. Cedar Park 25 rushing, 36 passing, including the touchdown play, Pell to Marshall. Here's the kick, down at about the 8 on the left hash, running straight up the hash for Angleton and into a crowd. He will not make the 25. A flag comes in at the end. He's down at the 24. Only about a 14-yard return. Let's yeah. see what the flag is. Got a Cedar Park player coming off the bottom of the pile with the football. Don't think he's going to be able to get that, but there is that late flag. Hopefully that's on that return team. And it is looking like he's motioning towards holding towards our sideline. So they will back him up 10 yards. And, I mean, that's just a gift from the football gods. We have to capitalize as the black rain. That was about a 14-yard return. They're going to take 10 of it away. So a net 4-yard return. 
And before they even snap the ball once, Anglin's got two penalties. I kind of like that. Three receivers right, two left. One man in the backfield with a quarterback, Ewell. Taking their time, getting set. Ewell gives to the running back. Goes right side. It's hit, drags the guy forward. He's going to get about three yards to the 13. And good job swarming to the football in the black rain. Doing a great job. Jake McAnally, number 31, the senior middle linebacker captain. Had a great game last week against the Johnson Jaguars. Spying Medina, that quarterback, and left late with an injury. But he's here starting tonight. We're going to need that presence early. Running back on that play was Deshaun Thomas. Back to throw now. Now he's going to give it to Thomas again, and he is really corralled in the backfield. He'll be back at the nine-yard line. Gained three and then lost four to Sean Thomas. And that was just a gang tackle, 5'9", five, nine, five, or 9'5", nine, 90, excuse me, and it looked like Big Murr, Murray Robinson care, came to give that delivering or final blow at the end of that play and setting him up with a third and 11. What an opportunity. So third and 11, two receivers right, one left. Ewell in the backfield. Deshaun Thomas next to him, fakes to him, looking over the middle. Good protection. Throws Drop. deep. No, it's dropped. He tries to throw ah. deep. It comes out of his hand, but it looks like they recovered it back at the four. They're calling it as a fumble, but I thought his throwing motion would have made that an incomplete I, I, pass. I did too. And I, I guess he might have lost it as he was rearing back, but that loss of three yards, wow, that puts him now punting from their own back line. The snap going to come from the four-yard line. Punter standing right yeah. on that back line. And they were at the nine, so that's a loss of five yards, and it goes down as a sack and a fumble. Great job by the Black Rain. Fourth and almost Ooh, 16 jumped, but uh, it's just going to make it fourth and 10 from the 10 or 11. Yep. That was uh, and it, that was on the outside gunner too on the punt block. So you hate to see that. I mean, especially Coach Q, who's came from this Chris Ross coaching tree, who started on that defensive line, who always had the football on the stick. And so those defensive linemen, they wouldn't move until they saw that stick move. Maybe they need to implement that right now on the special teams. I'm just getting a little too excited to go make a big play right there. But nonetheless, it's still fourth and eleven. I don't blame them. Punting team still on. Line of scrimmage is eh, north of the nine a little bit. And we got Houston Molinaro at there, 45. Great field position. Oh, this will be good. Snaps good. A little pressure. The kick is away. Comes down at the 40 and bounces away. Back, away, away, back away. to the 34. It's still going. They're watching it go. Thank you very much. Down at the 34. So that is a 5, 10, 15, 25 yard punt. Cedar Park in business. Yeah, Cedar Park did a great job. Houston Molinaro staying at their 45. That dropped 10 yards in front of them. And you just got to call Peter. Get all of your return men away from that football. And Cedar Park now taking over first and 10 from their 34. And oh only 34 yards away f and a kick from the uh, unmentionable stat. Oh, my goodness. 8-10 on the clock. Give having a great on. four minutes. Interesting formation. They've got that H back behind the left tackle. Two receivers spread right, which is the short side of the field. One left. So Adams in the backfield with Pell. So much speed at that receiver position with Weapon X and Houston Molinaro. Weapon X in motion. They give it to him and he fumbles, but he chases wow. it down. It's going to be a loss in the play of nine yards back to the 43. And that just looked like a botched uh, mesh right there. And Weapon X as that's a receiver. That's why you'd rather give that little shovel, and that's just an incomplete pass. Absolutely, and Weapon X as a receiver doesn't take too many meshes from the quarterback right there, so it looked like he was clean, had his pocket wide open, but it just bounced off the shoulder pads. Thankfully, Cody Marshall was able to bounce back on it. Good job to get back to it. So, second and 19. Give to Adams right through the middle. He'll get some of it back, gets to the hole on the left side, holds on to the ball, gets down to about the 32. Good gain by Adams of about 15 yards. Yeah, he should have been down in the rights for about five-yard gain, but he made a nice little cut backside to sleep, slip through some linebackers and get swung with forward progress. Third and manageable, but third about six and a half. Back to throw now as Pell throws to the left sideline and well out of bounds. He was under some pressure by uh, the Wildcats. So that failed third down attempt immediately put Cedar Park in a position now at fourth and seven inside Wildcat territory at the 31-yard line. I keep the offense on the field with how this season has gone. I'm trying to put as many points on the board as possible and convert. I'm yeah. not trying to pin them deep. This is no man's land. Fourth down and seven-ish, six-ish. 
near the left hash. Two receivers right, one left. Back to throw is Pell. Looking right. Throwing towards the end zone. Has a man inside the coverage, but Ooh. the guy jumps over him and knocks it down. Pell left it a little short. Kept leading him a little bit, and it would have been a touchdown. Instead, ball goes over on down. Definitely found the right receiver. Houston Molinaro had that defensive back on his back hip, and Josh Pell just dipped his shoulders a little bit too much and put some a little bit too much air under that to give the defensive back enough time to get under that underneath that football. So turnover on downs. Black Rain got to step up. So much for the unmentionable stat. First and 10, 31 yard line for Angleton. Two receivers to either side, running back in the backfield, fakes to him, goes back to throw. Flush running to the right side, tries to put a move on somebody, he's going to barely get back to the line. And that was Jake McAnally, thank goodness, and Brandon Payne. Brandon Payne. Yeah, Jake McAnally did a great job as that middle linebacker coming out and containing that quarterback, got beat on an inside move, but Brendan Payne was already there for the pursuit and had a great wrap-up tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Great team play on the defensive side of the ball. Eels, their second leading rusher, but uh, and also their leading rusher tonight now with zero. Yeah, digest that. Back to throw, arm pressure and sacked! Oh, whipped him down, ball comes loose, does Cedar Park get it? We think they do? The refs think that? Yes, they do! Wow, what a play! Unbelievable play, and I mean, that's what we're needing out of this black rain. We need opportunities of creating short fields and getting our offense on the field, and that's exactly how you do it right there. Oh, my goodness. And it happened so fast, I hadn't had a chance to get my binoculars up, so I didn't see who got that, Josh. I don't know if you did. No, I did, and I'm trying to keep up with yeah, that. Yeah, you're busy here. with all that stuff. Don't let them get, to get you too busy over there. So Cedar Park will start out. Another chance to get the... Uh, Unmentionable stats, 6.24 on the clock, up 7 nothing. first and 10 there, 23, left hash, gives the running back, runs right side, puts his shoulder down, he's going to get all the way down to about the 17, and I think... That was Tyree. Yeah, Tyree Nicholson. Yeah, big run by Tyree, and especially on first down to give us some breathing room, six minutes to go here in the first. Five yards on that run. Back to throw is Pell. He throws towards the left sideline. Complete. Guy to come back for it. He's not going to have the first down. Going to get three maybe on. three. It was Nick. Oh, nah. Joseph Edwards. No, no, number no put your binos on. That's not number eight. That's, <laughs> That's number five. <laughs> yep, you're right. That was number five, Nick. Three-yard gain. This time into the line again, Tyree. Oh. Can't quite get there. He's going to be about a half a yard short. And so far tonight, Cedar Park 0 for 2 on third downs. So now with this fourth and short, I mean, in field goal range, especially for Raylon Barr. Wow. I don't see a field goal team coming out. I don't either. I mean, it's fourth and one. Go get me a freaking yard. Let's go. Come on. Okay. Play Inter off interesting determination. They need to be able to get a yard. Got the heavy lineup in. Tyree Nicholson, the running back, with Pell. Gives it to him. Straight up the line. Puts his head down. Wow. And he's going to have it. A lot of help from his friends. Tyree's going to get about five yards to the ten. First and maybe first and goal. What a great run by Tyree. And the ball security, as soon as he gets to the line of scrimmage, both hands on the football and plowing those legs, but definitely getting help from those dough boys up front. Ethan Whittington, Connor Mason, Isaac Barksdale, those guys laying the lumber out there. 449 and ticking in the first, trying to expand a 7 nothing lead. Cedar Park. First down at the 10. The snap. Give to Nicholson. He runs right side. He gets a 5 4 wow. to drag the people to about the 3, maybe the 2. Now, I think he got swung down to the 2 with that forward progress. They'll mark him down at the 3. A great first down carry. And again, though, no first down. <laughs> I mean, we got to get to the end zone. It's second and goal. Second and goal from the 3. Closer to the right hash than the left. I would love a speed option, maybe. Nicholson again, the running the back. They'll give to him. No, Pell will keep and run left side. Does he have it? Yes. Into the end zone is Josh Pell. Touchdown, Timberwolves. A great job by Josh Pell running the mesh up into the line of scrimmage. And Tyree Nicholson did a great job, too. As soon as he faked the handoff, he took care of the man that was going to wrap him up. That gave Josh Pell the ability to use that speed to get to the outside. And if you watch that replay, Josh Pell cuts north and south very fast to get into the end zone. Clutch play by the senior captain. Cedar Park, the home team, and so they're playing the, the air raid sirens on that touchdown here at Waller Stadium. Here's Barr out of the hold of Marshall. Gathers in a funny snap. 
Kicks it through, and it's good. The unmentionable stat. Four minutes and eight seconds left in the first quarter. 14-0 Timberwolves. We'll be right back. At Wafit Bank, formerly Washington Federal, working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafit Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposit, over 32,000. And ATMs, free checking, Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800-324-9375. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football on the Vibe Live Network. The Willard of Oz here along with Brad Cohn. Thank you so much, Cecil Kokenauer, for listening and making sure that I'm doing this thing right. <laughs> We're missing our the best producer in the land, but thank you, Suna Venkat, as well as well as Rosie Bega, our QA tonight. And the Timberwolves take over the unmentionable sp- stat. 14-0 to zero our score here in the first quarter. 4-0-8 to play. And the Black Rain about to get on the field. Is this the same Cedar Park team we watched all year? I don't know. <laughs> doesn't seem like it does. It seems like the one we've been watching the last decade. This kick deep down to about the four on the far sideline. Running it back towards the middle. Hit hard at the 18-yard line. Nice job by Isaiah King. <laughs> Isaiah King, we had him on Timberwolf Night in America for the special teams unit night and did a great job running his lane. And it looked like that ball carrier from Angleton had the speed and the agility to get out out of some mess, but right there, Isaiah, Isaiah King just running his lane took care of that completely. Great job. 14 yards on that return, and they'll start off at their own 18, right between the hash marks. Give to the running back some room this time. They'll get positive yardage all the way out to the 27. Nine yards on the play by Thomas. A great counter play by the Wildcats, and they got Cedar Park sleeping, but thank goodness Reed Vines was staying at home. The sophomore linebacker, great open field tackle. Same formation. Give it to him again, Thomas, to the right side, and he is hit at the line and tackled by about five different guys. He's going to get maybe two yards, but that's all he needed for the first. Yeah, not much yardage to go right there for the first, but I think that's their first first down it is. of the game. Their initial first down, and on that carry, they went from negative one to one yard total offense. I mean, it, but that's it, we just cannot play Texas football. We're up fourteen to zero. Yeah, we can't I'm sorry. Go into Longhorn mode here. You know, Longhorn mode in the Rose Bowl under Vince Young, sure. Back to throw is Ewell. Mm. He will cut right oh. through the middle of missed tackle, and they come up quickly and get him at about the thirty. It's only going to be a yard gain on the play. Ethan Becker with the pursuit. Crowd. Great job by Ethan Becker. He went out in coverage as that outside linebacker, getting his man. But when he saw the quarterback step up trying to make a run, he beat his man to the quarterback, beat the block, fought through it. Great job, Ethan Becker, setting him up with second and long. Becker, I was looking through my, my binos, and Becker just appeared like a rocket out of the yeah. left side of the screen. About a yard gain, second and nine. Ewell's quarterback keeping left side. Hold Several holes. I'm looking yeah. at the binos. <laughs> out of bounds. There's at least two holes. He's going to gain only about two yards to the 32. I mean, you could have caught a hold on the backside on Brendan Payne. I think that's where they got it. But then also a great job by Ethan Becker again, who made the play last play. Did a great job fighting for that outside contain. But, I mean, there's too many people to call holding on on that play. Wow. They, you know, they only gave him the 30, so there's really no gain on that play. And marking them off 10, that's going to be a whopping 10 yarder. Oh, my. Wow. God. That is their third penalty already. Two of them have been holding. 25 yards on those three penalties. Yeah, the outside linebackers so far, Ethan Becker and Reed Vines, have really been playing great games, keeping outside contained and getting out into the flats and making good coverage. Ewells takes the snap, play action fake, throws complete, left side right at the line at the 20, he bursts through, got several people that he's taken him with him all the way to the 41, right when we didn't need it, we give up 21 yards in the first down. And that's why I love football, it takes one big play to, to make a momentum swing right, that, right there, and they had a second and long, a huge opportunity to force him into third and long, and they throw a wide receiver screen, oh my goodness. First completed pass of the game for Angleton. 
Offensive lineman switches sides to the right. Shovel pass. Complete. Going to the left side. Goes forward for several yards. About five. That was complete to their receiver. Kanan Go Karrion Goins. Don't we have trouble? We're going to just not say the second part of that name. And Jake McAnally did a good job tracking, tracking that receiver all the way through the motion and to the point of contact. He laid a nice blow, but Jake McAnally had to leave last game with a shoulder injury, so don't want him to take too many of those shots. Second down and about six. They're going to give him only four on that last carry. Back to throw his heels. He throws to the right side. Wow. I think completed about the 48, but that's only going to gain about three yards. And the fact that he completed that is insane because it was a great pass rush by Ian Ferguson and Brendan Payne. They were up in the quarterback's face in a hurry, and that quarterback throwing it off his back foot, falling away, completing that pass. All right, I'll give it to him. Okay, we'll give it to him. This time, Goins is going to run right into the no line. No good. And oh, oh, last oh. surge should get him the first down. Needed three. Would stop him after two, but he just kept going. Yeah, quarterback designed run right there and following the big hefties up front. I thought we did a good job of getting to the point of contact and stopping that play from, you know, pushing for the first down. But they got an extra push right there at the end for the big first. So across midfield now on R49. Pretty much between the hash marks, right on the big W. And that was the first converted third down of the night for either team. Sheer Park looking for a big W tonight. Back to throw, flush from the pocket, under some pressure, running left. They're going to sack him again back at the 46. That's a six-yard, a five-yard loss. Third sack of the game. A great job by Jackson Fortney, the junior middle linebacker that stayed at home and spied the quarterback. And when he decided to bail in the pocket, he sold out for him. Well, the quarterback outran that angle. But you got to beat the whole Timberwolves defense. Read Vines there to clean it up. Vines, all the Timberwolves linebackers are fast. They don't have a lot of size, but they can get to the point of issue immediately. And, and it's all about knowing your role, knowing your spacing, and knowing what area you have to cover. If you can do your job, you're going to earn your spot. All right, Thomas in the backfield with Adrian Ewells. Fakes to him, throws. Yeah! Oh, a big hit. It was a slant across the middle. Big, big hit by Luke Kuharski. Knocks it loose. Yeah, Luke Kuharski a little slow to get up on the end of that, and that's totally fine. That was a collision. That was a car wreck that happened right there at the point of contact. But that play would have been completed and probably out to the races if Luke Kuharski is not there to stop that dead yeah. in the right. He caught it right at the wow. first down marker. Big third, third down, down and five. Rolling right, looking left, continues rolling right, can't find anybody. He's going to throw deep down the right sideline. There's a man there, makes the catch at about the 20. Oh, oh, it goes free. Nice defensive play there. Four Timberwolves there. Who's the guy that knocked that loose, John? Dylan Hufford, number All nine. Right. And also Michael Putney there as well. I said Dylan Hufford. I think that was more number 10, Garrett Gasly. Gasly, yeah. And as well as Michael Putney. Getting a lot more playing time lately. But again, that was Brendan Payne. Oh, we got a flag down on the field on our Let's side. Let's see what we got. And they're motioning it towards them. There was I, just I would decline to make it fourth and five and make them punt. Absolutely. Unless they're, they're already thinking they need to go for it. <laughs> the way they designed that play, it looked like they were going to try to throw a throwback screen. So Brendan Payne on the backside, he immediately noticed that. He was off Scott Clean, and if you watch the replay, he completely breaks down like, I don't know what else to do. And he immediately goes sells out on the quarterback, and a great job of flushing him to the right side of the field and keeping him contained. And he tried to a launch one. He had an open receiver, but it being underthrown and into coverage, there was no chance. And it was an ineligible man downfield on Angleton, so of course we're going to decline that. It's fourth and five from their 46. Uh, they should punt, and that's the end of the first quarter. We'll be right back in a minute. Cedar Park up 14 nothing after one. Experience the difference at Toyota of Cedar Park, one of the Austin area's newest automobile dealerships. Their new vehicle department will always stock the newest Toyota models you need. The pre-owned vehicles they choose must each pass a rigorous inspection and be in tip-top shape before they make it to their lot or website for you to see. And if you're looking for budget-friendly Toyota certified used vehicles, they've got you covered. And you can rest easy knowing that the best new cars make the best used cars. That's Toyota of Cedar Park at Toyota of Cedar Park. Com. Welcome back, Cedar Park Football Vibe Live Network. Brad and Josh here, Rosie, our QA. Starting the second quarter, 14 0 Timberwolves. A score from College Station Peto leads Maynard after one, 14 0. So here it is, fourth down. Uh, they have moved something. It was fourth and five, now it's fourth and seven, so they have something wrong there on the far side. 
And I think the referees may be coming together to talk about that a little bit. I mean, but Cedar Park, when how much offensive production the Angleton Wildcats have produced this season, I feel like they've done a great job of keeping everything in front of them. And then offensively, 14 points on the board in the first quarter. I mean, come on. 91 yards of total offense for Cedar Park in quarter one to 29, and all of that is in the last six plays. Well, they back them up now, Brad. Yeah, wow. I said that they had something wrong. There we go. Okay, so they're back to the 46-yard line, and they'll be punting from the left hash, going southbound now. Flags in the end zone, barely moving. What wind there is is behind him. We'll be going against a slight wind the next two quarters. Snap, kick, it's away. 10, 20, mm. 30. Oh, another unfavorable oh, bounce. Didn't even get 30. <laughs> it's about a 27-yard punt. Yeah, that took a nasty Cedar Park bounce for the Wildcats back in... Uh, you know, going back in our p in our possession, and a great job though for Cedar Park holding strong on the defensive side of the ball. They gave up a third down, uh, but Cedar Park held strong and got them into another fourth in a punting situation. So Cedar Park has an opportunity to go up 21 here in the first half. I mean, yeah. this is not something we're used to this season, not folks. This year. <laughs> uh, 24 yards on that punt to the 29. First and 10, Cedar Park, right hash, going right to left now at their 29. Pell fakes, throws, complete out to the left side. Not a lot of room there for Weapon X. And we've probably got a holding penalty. It's going to gain two to the 32, but let's see what the flag's all about. And, I mean, they had me fooled. I, I, they gave the fake to Kevin me Adams, too. and I thought everybody thought Kevin Adams had the football. But he pulled that, and I thought it was a wise read seeing the numbers that Cody Marshall had on the outside. And he definitely made the first man miss. But with that holding call, that's probably going to be called. Ah, it hurts. So it's going to move back. Uh... Spot of the foul is a 32, so it's going to be an 8-yard penalty. Block in the back. Ooh, that's a 15-yarder. Let's see. Is that a spot foul? Yeah, it's a spot foul spot. from the spot is what he means. So it's back 10 yards right. from the spot, which is back a net of 8, so it's really an 8-yard penalty. It could be worse. We went from 1st <laughs> and 10 to 1st <laughs> and 18. It could be worse. Right, could be worse. <laughs> With the 22 now near the right hash. Two receivers right, one left. Tied in on the left end. Play action fake to the running back. Pell throwing over the middle. Nick oh! Gruyon stretches out and just can't get it just at midfield. That's okay. Nick Gruyon did a great job beating his man on the backside. That route is going to be open later in the game. And I love that formation, too, because they really disguised it like they were going to run heavy with Kevin Adams with how much beat yeah. they had up front. And Nick Gruyon to win on the backside like that, I guarantee that play is going to be there with how much Kevin Adams we give them later in the game. Marshall and Edwards to the right side. This one, get fake back to throw, throwing right side. Oof. Incomplete. That was a little too tight of a window to thread probably for Josh, and he had Cody Marshall, you know, cutting yep. back towards the middle of the field on a crack route, and he had Houston Molinaro on the deep route, and both receivers had their men de had their men beat, but their cornerbacks and their defenders did a great job of getting into that nestled window to where it makes it a very difficult throw. Third and 18. So far, Cedar Park over three on third downs. Free play. Uh, jumps, but he gets back in time. Eh. Oh, are they going to call it anyway? Down here on the receivers are Nick Gruyon jumps, so hopefully they'll oh. give that on the defense. They're going to give it on the offense. Okay. They found Nick jumping. So five yards back. That is the third penalty on Cedar Park, a total of 18 yards. And third in Oklahoma yeah. turns to third in Montana. Yeah. Well, we've gotten this before. Isn't that Third crazy? and 24. Back to throw his Pell. Screen pass incomplete <laughs> to the left, oh, right side. And it was deflected out of Adams' hands and right into the hands of a charging linebacker, Sean Blanks. But he dropped the ball. Thank goodness he probably could have scored. Yeah, that would have been an extremely short field for the... Angleton Wildcats to work with, but nonetheless, Connor Schutte is going to be standing at our own two-yard line to send this one deep. God bless this sophomore punter, by the way. We've really needed him to come in and fill that void for Josh Pell. Line of scrimmage, the 17. We need the 40 for a first down if you're thinking about a fake. I'm not. There's the snap. A line drive to keep it down. Oh, that hit him. That hit him. Did it hit that's the a, That's a free play. Guy. 
They pick it up at about their 47 down the right sideline. Cutting back towards the middle, picking up some blockers. Going towards the left sideline. This could be a disaster. The 15, the 10, the 5, and out of bounds somewhere around the 4. That's a 50-yard punt return and a first and goal. And just a heads-up play by the Angleton Wildcats. The way that that came off of Connor Schutte's foot, it looked like it was just a line drive, maybe got six feet off the ground. And when it bounced, it looked like it deflected off of a return man from the Wildcats. But the return man that was standing back deep to receive just did a great job fielding that, reversing field. Oh, my goodness, first and goal. It's a 36-yard punt, our first punt of the night, but a 54-yard return. First best and best field position all night. <laughs> Seven yard line. <laughs> yeah, I thought he got inside the five. So about a 51 yard return. This shovel pass moving to the right side. Five, four, three, two, one touchdown. So much for the unmentionable stand. It looks like that was Ewell who lined up and a guy in Wildcat shovels him the ball. I mean, that was a great executed play by offense and defense. Our outside linebacker did a great job when seeing that motion, crowding the line, and taking on his blocker to fight for outside coverage. And it looked like they were huddling up for a two-point play, but they're, they're bringing on the extra point unit. Uh, but still, a great job by the outside linebacker for turning him upfield, but a great job by the Wildcats uh, receiver for that speed and getting into the end zone. Kick is up and good. Cedar Park's lead is now narrowed. 14-7. Not even well, just about two minutes or a minute and two seconds into the second quarter. We'll be right back after this. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or MungiaRealEstate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A. Welcome back, Cedar Park Football, Vipe Live Network. Brad Cohn here along with Josh Willard, Rosie Bagar, QA. Cedar Park just gave up a touchdown run after a long punt return. That's 14-7 now, Timberwolves. 10.58 left before halftime. Cedar Park about to try its first kickoff return of the night. No, it's second. They got the opening kickoff. And it's an opportunity for Cedar Park now with some momentum on the Angleton Wildcats side. We started this game 14-0 to with the football. We really need to put together a possession that ends in a touchdown right here before half. Kickoff fielded at about the 8 on the right side. Tries to head back to the middle. He's only going to make it back to about the 17, a 9-yard return. And I think that may have been Chapa again. It was. Yeah. Yeah, the sophomore getting a lot of good reps here on special teams and just seeing the difference in the varsity speed versus that JV speed. And we're going to need some of that youth to get this experience through the playoffs in order to, you know, make sure that we, we've got some guys in the pipeline. 17-yard line, right hash mark. Timberwolves, 83 yards away. They call it the 18. Snap, gives, Adam stutter steps in the backfield. Not going to have much. Maybe he gets back to the line. Maybe not. And too much stuttering right there. And I feel like Kevin Adams has the speed to when he starts to stutter like that. Break it to the outside. Break it to the outside and trust your physicality. He has the strength in the weight room to give a stiff arm and get somebody off. No gain on the play. Second down, 10. Fakes to him. Pell looking. Over the middle. Fired. Oh, behind him. Hits him in the hands, but it was a little bit behind him. That's right where the receiver was, and he, I mean the defender was, he may have had a hand of, in knocking it out of Cody's hands. That was a great route by Cody Marshall, just getting his defender on his back hip and getting open in the middle of the field. Josh Pell, though, feeling a little bit of pressure, did deliver that a little bit behind. Cody Marshall, though, I'm still going to give it on him to make that catch in traffic. Third and ten, Pell started out two for two and a touchdown since then. One for eight, three yards. Oh! This one, he gets away. What a nice catch. Is that Weapon X? It is. Up at the 42, big gainer on the play. Mr. Reliable getting open on, on man coverage and did a great job of just bringing in that catch. Great job by Josh on Pell. Right back to Kevin Adams, Adams immediately in the backfield. Hitting the backfield, and they're going to say he loses about two to the, maybe three, no, two to the 39. 
Cedar Park now one for four on third down conversions with that completion to Cody Marshall. So second and 12, 9.56 and ticking here in the second, nursing a seven-point lead. Fakes to Marshall, pelt right back to the line and no farther. It's going to be third and almost 12. Thirty-nine yard line, almost the forty. Nine thirty-four and ticking. Need a first down pretty badly. Back to throw his pill under some pressure. He's going to roll back to the right. Got room to run. Will he run? Yes, he will. Steps inside, takes a hit, but he gets all the way to midfield. That's a gain on the play of about ten yards, and they're going to make it a forty-nine. But he needed twelve. I mean, that was a great heads-up play by Josh Pell and just sacrificing his body to get us to do it to fourth and short. And, I mean, up seven here at middle of the field. This is a ballsy call right here with how well fourth the black Fourth and two. Two receivers left. One right. Nobody in the backfield with Pell. He backed he's up. He's going to go ahead and kick. Quick kick. Catch him with nobody down there. And it's going to bounce down a little bit inside the 15. That's going to be a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 37 yard punt. 14 yard line is where uh, Panthers will start out. A great job by Josh Pell, who was, was he the all-district punter last year as a junior? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, did a great job right there stepping in and coffin cornering that one inside the red zone. Great job uh, by Josh Pell and flipping the field, and it's an opportunity now. We're only nursing a seven-point lead now. And I just said the Panthers. It's the Wildcats of Angleton, first and ten at their 14. Man in motion right to left. They give to the running back who hits right through the middle and gets a hole. 25, 30, heading towards the sideline. And he runs into somebody about there. He kind of lost his foot here. He would have had a lot more yards than that. Thank goodness. Out to the 34 for the first down. And that, once again, was their starting running back, Deshaun Thomas. 20 yards on the play. Their, four, or their fifth first down this time. And rolls dead at about the 7, a 54-yard punt, right when we didn't need it. Yeah, not what we needed at all, but got a great Angleton Wildcat bounce deep into Cedar Park territory. And down at our own 7? Come on, we love stats, Brad. We want to get these boys stats. Yeah. Let's go ahead and Let's drive this into the end zone. Touchdown drive. Yeah, yeah. Take seven minutes and two seconds. And Again, want to thank everybody. If we just caught us dropping the broadcast, we should be back up running now. Uh, thank you so much for... Cedar Park faithful. We got a good game going here. 7:02 to go here in the first half on top. 14-7. Two receivers to either side for Pell. 
Gives to the running back. He breaks through a nice hole in the middle outside. The 20 to the 23. Is that Tyree? Yeah. It's going to be about 16 yards in a first down. Great run by Tyree to start this possession that was from our own seven-yard line. So talk about some breathing room. Great job by Tyree. First down, quickly back to the line. Ah. This time into the line is Tyree. He's going to lose a yard. Back to the 21. And that was a great job by number 44, Kai McGee, this junior defensive lineman who just completely beat his man off the line of scrimmage and tackled him behind the line for a, lo for a loss. Second 11 from the 21, right hash. Tyree in the backfield with Pell. Back to throw, looks at him. Throws right side instead. Cutting inside is Molinaro with the catch out to the 25, 26. It's going to be third and manageable at the 26. We need the 32. And yeah, it's going to be a big third down opportunity right here. Probably a passing play. And Cedar Park now one for four on third down conversions. Third down and six. Back to throw. Play action fake. Going deep, left side, Gruyon coming towards it, makes the catch and falls on his back at their 37, first and 10 Timberwolves. Oh my goodness, thank goodness for Nick Gruyon being back in the, line at, in, in the lineup. We got the SFA track commit, the second place j high jumper in the state of Texas as a junior. High point in that crap for a big first down. 37 yards in the play, this time... Cody Marshall with a give going to the right side. A flag down will negate a nice gain of about 17 yards. Yeah, it was a great run by Cody Marshall right there. And he's such a patient runner. Reminds me of the professional in the past couple years, not this year, that just got released by the Ravens, Le'Veon Bell. But a very patient runner lets his blockers get out in front of him. But a little bit too much time right there as uh, maybe some jerseys held in the process. So the referee's coming to give us a sign here. We'll let you know since we know you can't see him. False start. I, hmm. No, it's not false start. He looks yeah, not false, false start, start to do 10 yards. It's a 10 yarder. It must have been holding. But he still, I mean, can you just speak, Brad, on the effectiveness of having Nick Gurion back in this lineup? Oh, my goodness. It, it gives so many more options, uh, makes them come alive. Mm. Makes the, the defense have to worry about that many more things. So here we go. First down and 20. Pell complete to Grant Nichols to the right side. He's going to gain about 6 to the 41. It'll be 2nd and about 14. It really has been impressive how much Grant Nichols has come into this offense at the latter part of the season. He's become a Mr. Reliable target, especially when Nick Grion went out. Um, he's just been a great key role in this offense. Back to throw is Pell. Slant, near side. Grion with a catch. He's immediately taken down, but he gains 6. They're going to give him 7 to the 34. It's going to be 3rd and about 6. I mean, great pitch and catch right there by the QB1 to Nick Grion to get us more yards and make it 3rd and manageable. Opportunity right here. Quickly to the line. Two receivers right, one That's left. That's offsides. He didn't call it, though. Pell, quarterback draw. He's going to go for the first down himself, and he's a little short, maybe a half a yard. He needed right between the 22 and 3. He's at the 23. Well, 10 years ago with Chris Ross, if you saw the head coach clapping on the sideline, that means line up, run the same play. I'm getting up and running the same play. Let's go. Fourth and a little less than one. Pell. Gives to the running back. It'll be a first down. I think that's Tyree. He's got three to the 25. A big first down to keep this possession going for the Timberwolves. And now with the clock dipping under 450, we've really got to focus on ball security and finishing with the touchdown. Ninth first down of the game for Cedar Park. First and 10 to 25, just like overtime. Pell back to throw across the middle, but he loses his receiver too far. Would have been a touchdown inside the five-yard line. The target was Nichols. Yeah, great job by Grant Nichols beating his linebacker in coverage. And, again, we've talked about these receivers getting their men on the back hip, and they've just done it all night. Interesting formation right out of this play. I'd like to burn a little more clock getting a touchdown here. 4.38 on a stopped clock. Shovel pass. Goes around the right side with Well. The 20 out of bounds at about the 20 or the 19. That'll be a gain of six and third down. A great job by Carter Well in this offense. Getting to the line of scrimmage, running a misdirection play very quickly to pick up yards as fast as possible. And the sophomore, tough earned yards there at the end of the play. So third and four. 19 yard line, right hash, 431 on the clock, which is stopped. Cedar Park, only out of Cedar Park only two for six on third downs. 
Let's ratchet that up here to three for seven. The give. Great blocking. Three for seven. First down. Ten. Five spins. And he's going to be stopped right at about the five-yard line. Well, I'm telling you, Brad, I'm telling you as a receiver, i got to give my boys some love for holding it down on the yeah. outside. Those wide receivers doing a great job holding down the edge. Houston Molinaro, that's how you get on the field as a Cedar Park receiver. You handle the outside, and you get an opportunity. Great job. 4.17 now on a ticking clock. First and goal from about the six. Into the line, and it's Mundell for the touchdown. First carry of the night, and it scores. Great job by Gavin Mundell getting into the end zone and finishing this drive with a crucial fourth down conversion, ending in a touchdown. That's the momentum that the Cedar Park offense needs to start building on into the second half. We need to keep the foot on the gas pedal. Gavin Mundell. Up wow. Charge into 20 to <laughs> 7. Here comes the kick from Barr out of the hole to Marshall. Did our Cedar Park team go through a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> Kick is up and good. They're getting awful close to blocking a lot of these place kicks. They didn't get that one. 21-7, 4-11 left. We'll be right back. The service department at Toyota of Cedar Park engages the latest equipment and technology to ensure their Toyota certified technicians work quickly and efficiently on your cars, trucks, and SUVs. Using genuine OEM parts, of course, and from college graduates and military rebates to service agreements that keep your Toyota running smoothly, their finance team will provide you with all the information you need. They are excited to be your Toyota dealer here in Cedar Park. That's Toyota of Cedar Park at Toyota of Cedar Park. Dot com. And welcome back to Cedar Park Football on the Vibe Live Network. The Willard of Oz here along with the V of the T, Brad Cohn. And we want to thank Rosie Vega hanging out as our QA and that gum, and I'm still going to introduce them. Cecil Kokenauer hanging out with us back home in the Austin area. So the Cedar Park Timberwolves capitalize on a nice touchdown possession right before half to go up 21-7 to by a touchdown run by Gavin Mundell. This kick is going to be a line drive to the end zone by the Norwegian Nightmare. They'll start at their 25. Yeah, the W of O and the V of the T, and Cecil drinks a Kokenauer. Can you just I mean... From the season that we've had, the non-district schedule, uh, you know, how many battles this team has been in. I, what are you feeling right now? I'm, I'm just as confused as we're here 21-7 to seven right now. This well, is exciting. Like you said, it's, it's, it's like they have become who they have been for the last yes. more than a decade. They found themselves here in the playoffs. First and ten, Wildcats. Shovel pass, running back comes right side, and he is quickly snowed under. Let's see the numbers, 44, Josh, and 20. I also got Jake McAnally staying at home, but that was, again, Christian Cockrell, number 46, outside linebacker, fighting for outside contain and staying at home. Did a great job of getting upfield quickly to force that ball carrier up the field right into the teeth of the defense. It could have been more perfectly executed. That was Kerry Ann Goins with a one-yard carry. Second and nine now, just outside the 26. 337 and ticking. Gives the running back bust through on the left side. Somebody's going to have to catch him. I don't know if anybody's going to. Folks, this could be a 74-yard touchdown run, and it is. Wow. And the old nemesis, just as we were saying we got back to who we were, we're back to who we are. <laughs> Giving up long, long touchdown runs. Going into this game, eight of the 18 longest runs in Cedar Park history were given up by this team this year, we might now be at 9 of 19. Well, interesting call right here. The deep offense might stay on the field for the two-point try, but they do bring on the extra point team. And again, the big play has not only killed this team in Cedar Park history, but every team in Cedar Park history. We've always given up the big yep. explosive You're plays. Right. It is a tradition. And it's uh, a little bit longer this year for some reason. Yeah, they've, they've been a little bit more extended past the 50, and that was a crucial one. Deshaun Thomas, a 76-yard touchdown run. The kick is good. 325 before the break. Cedar Park, time to uh, reestablish that 14-point lead. Now up 21-14. We'll be right back. 
at Wafed Bank, formerly Washington Federal. Working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafed Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposit, over 32,000 ATMs, free checking. Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800-324-9375. Welcome back to the Park Football Vibe Live Network. Brad Cohn here with Josh Willer, Rosie Bega, our QA, 325 left before the break. 21-14 now, Timberwolves. Just had established a 21-7 lead. Lost half of that, but plenty of time to make it 28-14. Here's the kick right down the middle. Low, bouncing. Picked up at the 5. Back towards the middle. Not much there. It gets through a hole. Goes back to the right side. He's got two guys to beat. Can't beat the kicker at about the 41. What a nice return. And, and was that our guy again? Oh, from, come on. It was up? definitely Houston Molinaro, yes, number Houston. 13, channeling his inner gunner absec energy right there and just taking the rock and from his own five-yard line with <laughs> dudes breathing down his neck. Couple shifty moves. He's out past the 30. Great field position for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. He got to capitalize on this. 3.15 to go in the half, and we're going to give the ball back at the end of the half, so Cedar Park has got to find a way to hold on to the football, drain this clock, and finish with a touchdown. Had two really good kickoff returns. Uh, the rookie had a 32-yarder, Molinero there with a 37-yarder. Cahoo! I think that's the first time this year we've had more than 30-yard kickoff returns twice in a game. Adams with the give. Nah. Nothing there for him. In fact, he's going to lose a yard. Yeah, backside right there looked like it got blown up, and a defender just knifed through the offensive line like butter and met Kevin Adams right at the line of scrimmage. And Kevin Adams, he's just dancing around too much because those offensive line are not getting a good enough push to get downfield. Kevin Adams might need to bust one outside. Second and 11. Give to Adams again. Same play. Nope, he's back to throw. Faked me. Got him over the middle. That's Cody Marshall. Is there? Grant Nichols, the 30, the 20, the 15, and out of bounds. What a nice job. A great job, and that was all set up. He had Brad Cohn and myself <laughs> fooled with Kevin Adams. I was following Kevin Adams on the run the whole time, but with that play action, nobody covered Grant Nichols over the middle. Did a great job holding those linebackers down for a big pitch and catch. That was 50 yards on the completion. Back to the line right away. Into the line goes the running back, Adams, and he'll take it inside the 10 to about the 7-yard line. A gain of 5, second down. Yeah, good strong run on first down right there, and again, it's just going to keep that clock moving right here I would I'm, I'm still trying to move with pace because when this Cedar Park team lacks that's when they kind of make mistakes and I'm trying to keep my pedal the gas pedal oh. right side into the end zone did he fumble no he was he was yep walking Side line judge already zone. caught it he already taken a couple steps before he fumbled in the end zone touchdown Timberwolves a great job by Josh Pell everybody was fooled again on this possession thinking that Kevin Adams had the rock but as soon as you saw Josh Pell running he was moving so fast and so quickly towards the end zone. I mean, he crossed that plane with ease for the touchdown and Cedar Park getting back almost to the unmentionable stat. It would be the third time if this kick goes through that they've made it to that point in this game. The other two times they fell back from it. Kick up and good. 2-11 left. Still plenty of time, unfortunately, for the Angles and Wildcats to answer again. But 28-14 Cedar Park will be right back the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. 
Shop Academy in store or online at academy.com and you can find the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans and more. Academy makes shopping convenient with curbside and in store pickup available for online orders. And again, this is Cedar Park Football on the Vibe Live Network. The Willard of Oz here with the V of the T, Brad Cohn and Rosie Vega. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on a Friday night here in the second round of the playoffs as the Timberwolves take a 28 to 14 lead to 11 before the half. Josh, we have been remiss. Three, four touchdowns. We haven't mentioned our touchdown sponsor once. T.J. Lewis Realty. T.J. Lewis. Lewis Realty. T.J. Lewis Realty. T.J. Lewis Realty. <laughs> T.J. Lewis Realty. And this is a return. There's a penalty flag at the 22, which is where the stop was made. Let's see what that is. Yeah, shout out to T.J. Lewis Realty. Please forgive us as uh, these games have just been too exciting. So we, we, we might have been remiss on the touchdown sponsors. But, again, Part we are... We're yeah. so thankful for all the sponsors. Thank you all so much for giving us this ability. Uh, this crew has been together for so long, and wow, we have a blast. Part of our <laughs> problem with missing those is this is the first time in all these years of broadcasting Cedar Park Games that we've had a touchdown sponsor. It's just not part of our routine. <laughs> eh. So it looks like there's a bad block on the return. 10-yard penalty back to the 12. Let me get that logged in. It's a lot of possessions here in the first half and not a lot of stoppage of time. So they'll be starting at their 12 left hash, 2.04 on the clock. Complete left side. He's going to run out of bounds after a gain of, oh, maybe six or so. Make that five. I'm going to stop that clock at right at 1.59, and Cedar Park has got to try to keep containment, keep these guys in bounds, keep that clock running, both teams holding on to all three timeouts. Goins was the receiver on that one. Cedar Park does take a timeout on this play. Line. Ewells, there's an S there. Back to throw is Ewells. Looking left side, flush from the pocket, going right. Looking, throwing downfield into some coverage and too long. Good coverage on that play by Cedar Park. Just a long incompletion. And he is now in a little doldrums. He's only completed one of his last five for six yards. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Cedar Park just did a great job up front. And these quarterbacks that have gone through other districts, that's fine. They can throw through a clean pocket. They can play it seven on seven. But when you get that black rain pass rush in your face for four quarters, it's very hard to throw a delivery and, and on target football. They are rushing tough tonight. He has been moved from the pocket almost every play. He's in a round. Goins in the backfield, and he has stopped for a big loss of about seven yards. Back to the 11. Who made the play, Josh? Uh, that was a great job by the cornerback staying at home as well as the safety and Luca Harsky there getting some, uh, getting some right there as well as George Wheeler, the backside corner, doing a great job. It looked like Angleton was trying to do some trickery right there. It's just too late in the game for trickery. Create a, a good pocket for your quarterback and try to get your receivers open downfield. That's just an interesting play call there on third down to do a trick play. And Cedar Park calls a timeout with 129 left to see if they can even add more to the lead. But I think seeing them running some kind of odd-looking plays, to me, is a sign of an admission by them that they can't figure out what works against the Black Rain. Right, and the Black Rain is doing a great job up front in the trenches. You can give a shout-out to Brendan Payne, Ian Ferguson, and Big Murr. Big Murr. Big Murr. Doing a great job controlling the line of scrimmage and giving opportunities for these linebackers to open up and make free plays as well as the defensive backs. Shout out to the Ball Hawks here in this ball game. They've done a great job of matching up with these receivers and locking up in coverage to where this quarterback can't make throws. And now they're forced into a fourth and 11 from their own 11-yard line. Point formation, left hash mark. Our man is at a 41. They're 41. So again, unless this hits the ground rolls, we're going to end up with some decent field position with about a minute and a half left. Snaps good. Very little pressure. Gets it away. Ooh, not a good 10, punt. 20. 23 yards and a fair catch at third. 33, 22 yards. I love that from Houston Molinaro. Don't let that bounce and take a good bounce. Yes. Get him to midfield. Come up and field that. Get your fair catch to where you're completely safe and protected by the officials. And now Cedar Park now within striking distance with a minute 31 to go. Can we get up 21? I hope so. Oh, we ha I mean, and this offense has done it the entire game. They've been doing it with a healthy dose of running as well as going through the air. And Josh Pell, I'm trusting him right now to make a deep throw towards the end zone. Only got one timeout to work with. Might want to use the sidelines and uh, Absolutely. purpose-built incomplete passes if there's nothing there to stop the clock. You only got one timeout. Might need to use it for field goal. 
Back to throw is Pell. Good protection. Now he drifts to the left. Throws left side sideline oh. out of bounds. A great diving catch over there by <laughs> Guion, but he was two or three steps out of bounds. Yeah, that was from, that, uh, from the uh, Stephen F. Austin commit Nick Guion, who committed for the track team out there and did a great job of trying to toe tap there on the sideline, but a little bit out of bounds. I'm telling you, we got enough weapons out there to go make big plays downfield. Give him a give him a 50-50 ball. We'll see how it turns out. But again, incomplete, so stops the clock. Buck 22. Three receivers left, two right. Nobody in the backfield with Pell. Back to throw. Quick throw to the right side. Yeah. He overthrows Cody Marshall out of bounds. So again, Pell kind of streaky. He'll have several completions in a row, and then a string where he has, you know, he's, you know, one for X, and he's in a one for X right now. And right now, Cedar Park three for seven on third down conversions. And with this third down and ten, I'm almost thinking, you know, just get Raylan ba Raylan Barr in field goal range. It is buck 19 on the clock, third and ten. If they don't get a first down, you're looking at at least a 42-yard field goal into a slight. I mean, win. a 14-point lead. It's two da two down possession too. Back to throws. Pell throws over the middle. Has a man caught. Nichols <gasps> ten yard line. First and goal. Uh, he caught and fumbled it. And they're saying they got they're it. They're saying that he's down. No, they're saying that he's down. The runner in contact is okay, down. Okay, okay. Wow. I think, I think on the far side, I thought this guy was going first down right, the other way, but right. he was actually calling the first down marker people to come on up. I mean, shout out to Josh Pell again going through his progression and seeing Houston Molinaro out of the cut, delivering that on time, in a hurry, in front of him. 22 to Nichols on that one. First down and goal at the 10. Adams to the left side. Spins free. He's at about the five, and that's where as far as he will get. 49 seconds and ticking. Still got plenty of time. Still holding on to that one timeout. No need to burn it right here. No need to burn it right here, but your offense needs to get back to the line. We need to run another play. We need to get at clock. least two plays off before we have to settle for a field Absolutely. goal. Second and goal at about the five. Left hash. Pell takes a high snap. He's going to run. Oh, there's a man wide open to the hash. Hits him for the touchdowns. Is that Edwards? Looked like an eight. Joseph had oh, Grant Nichols. A great job by the tight end getting lost in coverage. It looked like he was going to seal on that linebacker and just drifted off into the flats, and Josh Pell didn't waste any time delivering the rock to his Mr. Reliable. Grant Nichols hauling it in for the big touchdown right before half. My goodness, Brad. Nichols at 90 yards <laughs> receiving on the night. I mean, Not he even at halftime. He has really come along since that Weiss game. The snap, the hole. And they're almost there again. And they're up and good. Man, they're going <laughs> to block one for the night's over. 29 seconds left before halftime. 35-14 Timberwolves will be right back. In the battle for barbecue supremacy, warriors pit prime meats, secret sauces, and recipes against one another. Yet one champion stands alone. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue in the modern day vernacular where bad means good. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue has the worst barbecue in Texas. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football on the Vibe Live Network. The Willard of Oz here along with Brad Cohn and Rosie Bega hanging out as our QA and the Cedar Park Timberwolves, my goodness, with 29 seconds to go here in the first half on top now. 35-14 to 14 on the connection from Josh Pell to Grant Nichols from five yards. The kick good from Raylan Barr. For Cedar Park, 21 points in the last seven and a half minutes. <laughs> what? Is that number four out there? Is that, <laughs> is that Ryder Hernandez out there? Good for Josh. Good for everybody. Doing a great job out there. Here's the kickoff by... The Norwegian Nightmare deep left side caught at the six. Going to run it right up the numbers near us. Now cut to the middle of the field. Carry on is the guy past the 20. Now up the left sideline. And he ran about 85 yards to get oh, probably a 20-yard return. Yeah, that was a lot of running right there. And a great job of everybody running their lanes. Again, Garrett Gasly, number 10, did a great job. It looked like he was the backside gunner on the hash mark. And... As much as you want to start funneling to the football where it's received, you have to keep running your lane. Everybody doing that right there, and you see the ball carry get strung out all the way to the sideline. Again, 80 yards for a five-yard carry. First and 10, Wildcats there, 29 left hash. Play action fake, complete left side at the line of scrimmage. Sidesteps a guy, goes forward for about 11. Let's see who that is. 
the number 15 ball carrier in Big Murr. Whoever that is hurt himself. I think he fell on the ball. Yeah, Big Murr actu actually landed on top of him, and uh, that's what you want out of your defensive lineman. That's incredible. <laughs> that's incredible that your defensive linemen are able to get off the blocks and get downfield to go make an open field tackle. And I'm sorry if you're leaving yourself vulnerable like that. Big Murr is going to have an opportunity to lay on you. And and that's the part that's crazy in the NFL game today about the defensive line and the defensive backers that they're not allowed to land on the quarterback after the contact. How can you adjust? I don't your, know how you can avoid that. How sometimes. can you adjust yourself in midair? Yeah. Right there, Murray Robinson. Uh, he's tackling the person in forward progress. He's going to lay on him. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. That's, that's just how it is. Well, they got a first down at the 40. It's their seventh first down of the game, and that's only their fourth real completed pass. Their touchdown pass of seven yards was uh, a shovel out of the Wildcat that ended up in the hands of the normal quarterback when he scored. Twelve seconds left. They're 60 yards away. Snap. Back to throw. Slant inside from the right side, complete for about five. Clock's ticking four. And I guess a timeout is called. Five-yard gain. They stop the clock with four seconds. So they're doing what they should, trying to get as much out of it as they can. Not a lot of chance here with four seconds and still 55 yards away. Chance. They're giving him a couple seconds back. Six seconds now on the clock. Malik Woods, that guy, is their leading receiver. Two catches for 26 yards. Second and five. Six seconds left. Ball pretty much in the middle of the hash marks. 55 yards away from pay dirt. Cedar Park almost looks like a kickoff receiving team on defense. Really spread deep. Here goes the Hail Mary. It's not very deep. <laughs> and knocked down incomplete. We are at halftime, 35-14 Timberwolves. Now, let me tell you what we're going to do at halftime. we got 28 minutes to kill, and there's no band that we can have you listen to because we have no outside sound mic capability. Oh, there's a penalty on the offense that has declined because the incomplete pass ended the half with no gain. So we're going to go to an expended, extended break. Josh, play like maybe four minutes of commercials to give us a little bit of a break. We'll come back and do the halftime stats and talk about the half and so forth. And then after that, we're going to go away for a long time. Uh, and we're just going to kind of play every commercial we have until the half it. is over. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape. Meet new people and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Rob. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. So why do teenagers play high school sports? My reason why is a sense of purpose. My reason why is to inspire others. One reason student athletes seldom mention is to get an athletic scholarship. They know that only 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. So why do they play? My reason why is friendship. Tell us your reason using the hashtag MyReasonWhy. This message presented by the NFHS and the Texas University Interscholastic League. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, 
the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Question. When you walk into the boardrooms of the most successful companies here in Texas, who do you meet? Answer. Men and women who play high school sports. Education-based high school sports give us more than athletes we can root for. They give us leaders we can depend on. Question. So where will we find tomorrow's leaders? Answer. High school sports. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. For barbecue supremacy, warriors pit prime meats, secret sauces, and recipes against one another. Yet one champion stands alone. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, in the modern-day vernacular, where bad means good. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue has the worst barbecue in Texas. At Wafed Bank, formerly Washington Federal, working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafed Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposits over 32,000 ATMs, free checking, Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800-324-9375. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. So why do teenagers play high school sports? My reason why is a sense of purpose. My reason why is to inspire others. One reason student athletes seldom mention is to get an athletic scholarship. They know that only 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. So why do they play? My reason why is friendship. Tell us your reason using the hashtag MyReasonWhy. This message presented by the NFHS and the Texas University Interscholastic League. Welcome back to the Hart Football Life Live Network. We're at halftime. Brad Cohn here along with Josh Word, Rosie Vega. Hanging around is our QA. Thanks, Rosie. We are at 35-14 Cedar Park. Here quickly are the numbers. First down, 17-7. Rushing Cedar Park, 26 for 130, a five-yard average. Because of a 76-yard run, they're better than us at 5.56. Otherwise, the other 17 carries, Josh, 24 yards. That's the number to really think about. Absolutely. Through the air, Cedar Park, 11 of 20, 196 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Angleton, 6 of 11 for 53 yards, half of that on one play. Uh, 4.82 yards a, 
uh, a throw, 9.8 for us. Total offense, 326 to 153 when one yard more than half of their offense is on all of their other plays. Oh, my goodness. One yard less than half of their offense is on one run. Stop me if you've heard that before. <laughs> uh, for them, their offensive numbers, Deshaun Thomas, running back, 6 for 106 with a 76-yard touchdown run. Ayul is the quarterback, 6 for 9. Carrying Goins, 3 carries for minus 1. There have been 3 sacks. There were 6 last week. Now 9 sacks by the Black Rain in 6 quarters. 14 yards and losses tonight. Ewell's 5 of 10 through the air for 46 yards. Uh, Malik Woods, two catches for 26 yards, is their leading receiver. Not a lot of offensive numbers for them outside that 76-yard run. Their other touchdown was uh, on a field position, uh, field position issue uh, after a long punt return. So two long runs with the ball, one on a punt return team, one on a run from scrimmage. Uh, or what's keeping them from being shut out 35 to nothing. Adams, 8 for 44, a 5.5 average. Pell, 6 for 35, a 5.8 average. Touchdowns of 3 and 12. Tyree Nicholson, 7 for 36, 5.1 average. Mundell, 1 for 6, it was a touchdown. Cody Marshall, 3 for 3. And Carterwell, 1 for 6. Pell, all the passing yards, 11 for 21, 96. 29 yard touchdown to Marshall. 5 yard touchdown to Gavin Mundell. Uh, Nick Grouillon, Three catches for 47 yards, and oh my gosh, it's good to have him and his 15.7 average back in the lineup. Molnaro, one for six. Marshall, two for 53, 29 and 24 yards. Grant Nichols, five for 90, an 18-yard average. Seven yards, six yards, 22 yards, 50 yards, and a five-yard touchdown. I mean, I'm telling you, this is a stat line that Cedar Park is accustomed to, to having and for them to be in this position right now is just a I mean a testament to how this team has battled adversity and shown resiliency to get to this point I mean this team clawed their way into the playoffs at a five and five record to barely get that head-to-head -head victory win over Georgetown in 45 seconds at the end of that game to get that third place uh, position so Cedar Park clawed their way into the playoffs and all that gets thrown out when you're in the playoffs. It's now all about going 1-0 and during the week. Cedar Park did that last week against Buta Johnson and a team that was feeling very high on, this, on themselves. And now again against this Angleton Wildcats team. Angleton, if you know Cedar, uh, you know Texas high school football, Angleton has a, been a team historically that has made deep playoff runs. And for Cedar Park to be in this position on top, 35-14 to at halftime, it is just a testament to how this team has shown and proven their resiliency throughout the whole year. All right. Don't forget Timberwolf Night in America, Tuesday night, November 23rd, when Josh and I will host the captains um, uh, from the defending national champion Cedar Park Cheer Squad live from Santa Catarina Mexican Restaurant on Cypress Creek Road, 730 to 9. The show will air whether we win or lose tonight. If we win, next week's guests might well be some volleyball players. All right. I'm going to do something here that uh, has kind of been a tradition. Uh, on Cedar Park broadcast. Uh, enough fans are new to the experience each year that they may not be familiar with what the Texas State High School football playoff structure actually encompasses. So I'm now going to provide my annual description of one of the nation's premier scholastic sporting events. Buckle in. Here goes. They say everything's bigger in Texas, and there's a reason they say that. The reason is that everything is bigger in Texas. There are more high school playoff teams in Texas than there are high school teams in 43 of the other 49 states. Now, keep in mind, I'm only going to be talking about standardized 11-man football here. There are also hundreds of six-man teams in the state, mostly out in West Texas, and that's really almost another sport. Now, I have to start with some background knowledge that, I'm sorry, may be disturbing to collegiate football fans of the Aggies and Red Raiders and Bears. High school football in this state is run by the University of By God, Texas. The University of Scholastic League, the UIL, is the ruling body of all public high school athletics in Texas. And the UIL is a department of and is funded by the University of Texas. That's the university part that they're talking about in the name University of Scholastic League. Interpret that how you will. 11-man teams statewide are divvied up into five size classifications by the UIL. 
2A at the smallest end up through 6A at the largest. There's no upper cap, and yeah, that does mean that some 6A schools have 2,200 students, and they might play in a district with another one that's 4,800 students. Happens up in the Dallas area a lot. Each classification, 2A through 6A, contains exactly 32 districts. Generally speaking, the lower the district number, the farther west that district is located geographically. The highest numbers down south in the valley. They kind of go around a clockwise motion to get there. The UIL tries to have at least six teams in each district and works hard to keep them as geographically close as possible but often there are eight teams in a district in a few cases there are five seven or even nine or four and even numbers desired to avoid single team buys every week uh, through the district schedule at the end of the regular season the top four finishers in each district advance to the playoffs so do the math four teams times 32 districts times five classifications in Texas, 640 high school football teams make the playoffs. There are only 235 high school teams, period, in my native Kansas, for example. There are three times as many playoff teams in Texas as there are teams in Kansas. This ratio holds true for over half the states in the Union, by the way, and the Confederacy. Further, the UIL has decided that five state champions aren't enough in this fabricated social structure we've concocted for everybody's a winner. So they've instituted a Division I and Division II for each of the five classifications. So now there are ten state champions, and yes, that's more than any other state has too. In 5A down through 2A, the D1, D2 parsing occurs when the UIL biennially, biennially rather, easy for you to say, creates the districts. So of the 32 5A districts, 16 of them from the outset are D1 and 16 are D2. For 6A only, this D1, D2 parsing is only applied after the playoff teams are set. Within a 6A district's four playoff teams, the two with the largest enrollment go to D1, the two with the smallest go to D2. Right away you can see the problem here. By instituting this D1, D2 sorting of playoff teams only at the district level and not the statewide level, both D1 and D2 brackets in 6A only have widely ranging enrollments that greatly overlap each other. D1 is not the biggest schools in the state in 6A, with D2 teams always being smaller. Being D2 doesn't mean you're a small 6A school. It just means that there are at least two schools in your 6A district that are larger than you. You could be the third largest high school in all of Texas and end up D2. In fact, and I've done the research on this, about one-third of the time, the final D1 state champion in 6A has actually been a smaller school than the D2 champion. Perhaps because people like me have been pointing this out for almost a decade. Two years ago, the UIL rescinded this approach in 5A through 2A. Not sure why they haven't made 6A work the same way. Works a lot better down here where we are. For all classifications below 6A, to get from those four playoff teams per district to a state champion, the first pair down is accomplished with a biennial D1, D2 split at the outset. Instead of one 128-team bracket for, say, 5A football, there's one 5A D2 bracket of 64 teams and a 5A D1 bracket of 64 more with four teams from every district in each bracket. This effectively cuts the number of playoff rounds from seven to six and lets us all get done before Christmas. Well, most years, it certainly didn't last year, our state championship game was in mid-January. Further, the brackets are divided into four regions. Generally speaking, the regions can be geographically described like this. West Texas, including the Panhandle, is region one, and in each classification level, D1 and D2, contains districts one through four. North Texas is Region 2, containing Districts 5 through 8. East Texas is Region 3, and contains Districts 9 through 12, and that's where we are, is District 11, 5A. South Texas is Region 4, and contains Districts 13 through 16. Because of the disparity of population distribution, this geographical parsing isn't strictly true, as the region boundaries have to gerrymander some through the large population centers of the Dallas and Houston metro areas, and even a little bit around Austin. But it's still a fairly accurate way to describe the regional arrangements. Yes, you probably surmise that this means it's a possibility that at the 6A level, both Texas state champions in a given classification could end up coming from the same district. If one of us district's D1 teams wins a D1 bracket, and one of us D2 teams wins that bracket. In our old district 25-5A, twice that almost happened. 
when they were still doing 5A that way. It was in 2012 with Cedar Park and Rouse, and then in 2015 with Cedar Park and Vista Ridge. In both years, Rouse and Ridge fell in the state semifinals in the D1 bracket, and we won the D2 state title. In 2015, it almost happened in 6A as a district championship Lake Travis team and runner-up Westlake both made it to the D2 and D1 state championship game, but both lost. Round one, what we played last week, is called by district and has a higher finishing team from one number district host a lower finishing team from the next number district. That's why Cedar Park, third place in 11-5A, played at Buta Johnson, the two seed from 12-5A, and why Weiss, our district's top seed, hosted the four seed from 12-5A, Seguin, and so on down the line. The top two seeds always host the three and four seeds. So Weiss and Maynard got first round home games out of that deal. Round one cuts the number of teams in each bracket in half. After last week, we were down from 64 teams in the 5A D1 bracket to 32. After the area round, or round two, sometimes also called the regional quarterfinals, which is this game tonight, the bracket will be cut down to the Sweet 16. In fact, the, tens te uh, the 10 Texas State High School football playoff brackets follow each of them exactly the 64 down to one in six rounds pattern of the NCAA March Madness basketball tournament. Only in football, you can only play one game a week, not two. So our football tournament lasts twice as long as March Madness, six weeks. After the second round games, the winners will advance to games that are called the regionals. Again, just like March Madness, we would move on to the Region 3 semifinals, followed by the Region 3 finals in round four. When those two, and you're in the equivalent of the final four, the four Texas regional champs play two state semifinals and then a state championship game. And that is how it works. Six solid weeks of one-night stand do-or-die death matches for the teams that make it all the way to the state championship game, which we have done four times. And it is most definitely one hell of a rush. And remember, we've got both D1 and D2 and 2A through 6A all doing this simultaneously. Imagine, if you can, 10 NCAA basketball tournaments and the number of games and teams and all the logistics that would involve. Get your mind around that and you've encompassed the totality of the Texas high school football playoffs. The crowning event of the national sport of Texas. There is nothing else like it in the entire nation. Now, folks from what we Texans call the outlying areas may ruffle a bit hearing this, but hey, we've got this braggart reputation anyway, so here goes. When you're anointed as the best team in Texas, it's a bit more of an accomplishment than championships in other states, and I'm talking strictly about scale here, even if the quality was the same, and actually it isn't. Based on population and number of teams, being the best in Texas is comparable to, say, if there were some mythical high school championship that a team from perhaps Birmingham, Alabama could win that made them the champion over every team, not just in Alabama, but also those in Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. That would almost be the equivalent of the number of teams that would finish below you in Texas if you won that state title, but you'd actually still have to throw Mississippi into the mix to get to the same approximate population and number of teams. So being the best in one of the four regions in Texas is actually slightly more impressive in scale than being the state champion in any of those five states I mentioned. And to slide the comparison northward a little, the state champion of Texas has conquered the number of people and schools and teams equivalent to the entire states of West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania put together. That's why Texas high school football is the premium grade blend of scholastic sports in America because yes everything is bigger in Texas and now Josh has something he wants to talk to you about oh we're not going to do that well I mean, you know I'm trying to get it pulled up but I, I the Wi-Fi here I'm not able to join oh, so shoot. it's not pulling up and loading fast enough but I will tell them what it is tease them because next week if we have a game or at Timberwolf Night in America we will do this well we had an opportunity where uh, one of Cedar Park's very own last week was on the field for a a, a big moment in the Baylor Bears taking down the Oklahoma Sooners in a big Big 12 matchup. And on the field during that game, you would see flashes of number 34, Josh Cameron. And again, this, was, this was not a five-star. This was not a four-star. Hell, he wasn't even a one-star recruit. This was somebody that came in completely under the radar, even though he was on one of the most prolific offenses in Texas high school football history. And... Uh, Yancey Culp's post that will break down during Timberwolf Night in America pretty much just sums it up under it's incredible the star rating system that we have in place today because there is no 
you know, system in place to credit who is a culture guy versus who is not. And even though these five-star recruits, yes, they have talent out the wazoo, but they are truly focused on themselves, especially in a world that's, you know, geared towards NIL earnings. And so for Josh Cameron to have the opportunity to get onto the football field last week, it's just a credit to his hard work and dedication that was implemented here from the Cedar Park community, not only through the program, but also through Yancey Culp and his ability to get kids to want to compete for fun on the weekends. And my brother and I both went through the Yancey Culp uh, system and, you know, obviously doing the Cedar Park system as well simultaneously and his ability to make kids want to compete for fun on a Saturday after a football game, it is mind-blowing to me how long he can keep kids at the football field after a game just wanting to get better. And, I mean, you saw last week we saw videos of this particular Cedar Park team after getting a first-round win against the Johnson Jaguars. They go over to Leander to go to that pit over by Leander High School and running Brushy Middle School, and they're running hills. And it's not just, you know, the starters. This is a lot of kids in the program that are showing up to run these hills in the offseason as well as in the playoffs, even after a victory. So I uh, just want to give a shout-out. Yancey Colt made this post about, you know, the not getting this, the light of the four-star and the five-stars from the Cedar Park community. But I, uh, the, the, mo the point of this, you know, talk about this post is also giving credit to Yancey Colt and just thanking him and giving him his flowers uh, for investing his time and commitment to the Cedar Park community all the way back 10 years ago when my brother was trying to get recruited by Baylor University and Yancey was, you know, honing in my brother's 40-yard time and personally working with him to make sure that he could perfect his craft to get to the next level, but always with the mindset of helping out this Timberwolf football team. And so far, that's what we've seen tonight. We've seen a collective team effort on the offense, defensive side, as well as the special teams unit. And it's just exciting to see this Cedar Park team that has crawled their way into the playoffs to look as formidable as they are right now. Need for to think about uh, for J Cam Josh Cameron last year playing Anderson and Leander and then last weekend he played Oklahoma. I mean, and really cool. And to to have that Big Twelve emblem on your jersey and you know being able to get on the field as a true freshman, it's a credit to Josh Cameron's you know just innate ability to fit in, not trying to be the guy but just fit into the culture and just gelling with the culture that's already there. Um, Josh Cameron earning his spot to get on the field as a true freshman in the Big 12. It's amazing. And being such a class act, my, my wife and I, Sherry and I, were at the uh, uh, the Vietnamese donut shop. I can't remember what it's called. It's over there. Uh, oh, it's, it's behind uh, Dunkin' Donuts near there. Anyway, it's, it's the donut shop we prefer. We were there. Standing there getting ready to take our order one day behind some people, and then I noticed there's a guy behind us. It's a tall, young black man. And it was Josh Cameron waiting behind us to take notes. So I introduced him to Sherry, and he and Sherry started talking. He shook hands, smiled, and chatted her up a little bit. We got our donuts, and we all left. And as we were leaving, Sherry says, that was such a nice young man. Well, that was Josh Cameron. Well, I finally got it loaded, so I'll briefly run through it. I'm still beyond proud of this young man, Josh Cameron, a.k.a. J. Cam, a five-star culture and zero-star actual rating in the system. The young man that Baylor did their research on and got him on campus. Josh had an epic high school stats. He received no D1 offers, but props to Baylor. Yes, he's on the field as a true freshman help, helping take down Oklahoma last Saturday. I had the amazing opportunity to work with Cedar Park Timberwolf. Uh, to, had an opportunity to work with this Cedar Park Timberwolf since seventh grade and his 100% as a five-star culture kid. He comes to work and sets the standard. He always brought a high level of respect in the process to every training session. It was, yes, sir, I'm ready. The biggest thing to point from this, and it, you could tell this about any Cedar Park kid from what Yancey said, any D1 coaching staff who sat down and talked to Cedar Park coaching staff would get 30, re 30 minutes and 30 reasons why you want this young man on yeah, your team. No kidding. You can say that about anybody on the Cedar Park roster because they come from a culture of winning and come from a culture of helping out their brothers it's not about themselves shout out to Yancey Colt that was a beautiful way to to put it into words about this unseen star that Josh Cameron is you know Yancey is such a vital part of, of our culture for football at Cedar Park and our operations uh, you know, we can't do without Yancey Colt he's just part of this institution 
Now, my machine has gone down for a moment, so I'm going to be in dire straits to get the stats up because we're about to do the kickoff. I'm powering the machine back off. Cedar Park kicks off into the end zone, and Angleton will bring it out to the 25, and uh, i got to find some way. I guess I'm going to have to borrow your pen, Josh, for a little bit to scratch down some stuff. Go ahead and scratch while, while down. We're, while we're waiting for my machine to come back up, so when it does come back up, I can get these next couple of plays put in. Cedar Park will start out, I mean, excuse me, Angleton will start out from the 25 between the hashes, going left to right, that's north to south. Just a few moments ago, I saw the field goal kicker banging him in from 50 yards out here. Quarterback Eagle gets an opening on the left side. He tiptoes through some players, fumbles the ball away in midfield. Do we get it? Our players say we got it. They say they got it. Uh, it looked like Cedar Park jumped on that football, but Angleton coming off the bottom of the pile by a gift of the football gods. Oh, my goodness, a 25-yard gain. Excellent. And a first down. I'm going to grab my pen just to make sure we're keeping us honest. There you go. That machine is starting to come back. So far, I've only missed two plays. A kickoff and that 25-yard run for a first down by the Wildcats. Back to throw. Actually, he's going to give it in the line. This is his running back to the left side for four down to our 46. Uh, and that is uh, Deshaun Thomas for four. A great job by Cedar Park keeping that outside contained. Reed Vines right there, number 42, the outside linebacker, just did a great job of pushing up field and not giving up any ground. Second and six, 11-17 and ticking there at our 46 left hash. Three receivers right, two left. Man in motion now, four on the right. Quarterback takes. It's Goins, actually. He took the Wildcat running left side. He should have the first down. Wow, out of bounds short. right at the marker, the 40, which would be a gain of six. Yeah, they do give him the first. I thought he was going to get out of bounds short just by a yard, but a great job again by number 44, Brendan Payne getting down the line of scrimmage and forcing that quarterback or, excuse me, ball carrier towards the sideline. And it looks like they're going to go with that Wildcat. Carry in Goins. He is again in the backfield. Only man there to take the direct snap. Three receivers right, two left. First and ten at our 40 left hash. Man in motion now. He's going to follow him to the right side. This is a good offense for them. He's going to get five down to the 35. Second down. Oh, big murr right there ready to wrestle him down and that's fine that Goins got out there in a hurry to make a good carry on first down but he got brought down hard to the turf and I guarantee you you're not going to want to keep doing that trailing a team by 21 points you're going to get tired yeah. of those hits 10 39 and taking second and five from our 35 three receivers right back to the standard formation Ewell takes it himself and he is stopped uh, behind the line for a loss of one on the running play. And it looks like that was Brendan Payne. A great job by Brendan Payne beating his man and just fighting down the line of scrimmage to make there a no gain on a play. Great job by this front defensive line by Cedar Park. Again, that 3-4 defense, you're asking a lot from these guys up front to win these double teams and fight off the blocks to make plays at the line of scrimmage, and they're doing it tonight. Big play, third down and seven from the 37 back to throw. Throws towards the slant, overthrows one guy and underthrows another. Incomplete pass. Yeah, that was just a, a, a very rushed throw right there and off target, so it's going to be incomplete. No flags on the play. The offense staying on the field, trailing by 21. I think they have to, yeah. yeah. I mean, and especially in Cedar Park territory, you got to go for it. Fourth and seven. Our 37-yard line, 9.55 on a stopped clock. Almost got my machine back. Three to the left, one to the right, one man in the backfield with Adrian Ewell. Takes a snap. Gives to his running what back. Left side, play? not much there. What? what was that? You're right. They needed seven. They had a one-yard run to the left tackle. Wow, it was Thomas for just a yard. Yeah, that was an interesting design play. That was just a designed run, no play action or anything off of that, and not to fool the defense and get any misdirection. It was just a designed run to the left side, trying to bounce it off the tackle, but a great job by that outside pressure from the black rain to bust that up the line of scrimmage to take that lead blocker completely out of the play, and that running back just running in to where all the contact is right at the line of scrimmage. That, was, that had no chance. So, Josh, I'm going to give you a chance to do what you do at home. I want you to call this possession for Cedar Park. My machine's coming back. i got to try to update the stats and get up to date. 
Oh, I'd love that opportunity. Go ahead. An interesting call. Is this a automatic first down for Angleton? Should be a first down for us. Wasn't that fourth down? It was fourth and seven. They gained a yard. I'm not sure what. Okay, good. It was after the play. That's what I was waiting for. Uh, you couldn't hear it, but the referee gave unsportsmanlike conduct penalties to Cedar Park and to Angleton. Since it was after the fourth down play, we still have the ball, and since they offset, there's no yardage assessment. First and ten, Cedar Park for Josh to call it at the 36. Absolutely. Josh Pell and company getting back out, ready to start this possession from our own 36-yard line. Kevin Adams checked into the backfield at running back just to the right of the Pell. Twins to either side. They're going to give it to Cadman Adams right up the middle. Makes a man miss and fighting through some traffic. Gets some love from number 67, Ethan Whittington. Gets a nice little push for a gain of just about four yards. It'll bring up second and six for Kevin Adams on that first down carry. So ball now on the left hash. Kevin Adams to the left of Josh Pell. One receiver split. Wade Wright. Cody Marshall in motion from left to right now in the slot on the right side. Play action. Dropping back. Stepping up in the pocket. Fires over to Weapon X and hit him right in the hands. Cody Marshall. It falls incomplete. Uh, definitely that wasn't enough steps to feel some contact, Brad. He should have brought that one in. Yeah, he was wide open. Hits him right in the hands. He must have already been thinking about, you know, about what he was going to do afterwards. A big third down play, third and six for the Timberwolves from our own 40-yard line. Josh Pell has twins receivers to the right, one solo left. That's Nick Gruyon. It looks like single coverage. It looks like Grant Nichols on the H-back on that left side of the line right behind the tackle. Josh Pell dropping back and to throw the screen just outside the reach of Grant Nichols. That falls incomplete. A big fourth down uh, quickly now for the Cedar Park Timberwolf offense. But again, nursing that 21-point lead, ball security. So Cedar Park looking like they're going to bring on the punting unit and sophomore Connor Schutte coming on the field now. He's going to be standing at our own 25-yard line. And a good snap, a good punt. That's a line driver right there. Connor got a good bounce on this one. It's going to take a roll inside the red zone all the way down to the 15. They'll mark it down right at the 16-yard line. Great job by the sophomore. That's a 44-yard punt. Need to log that in, too. So Cedar Park not necessarily being able to push the field and reverse it, but shout-out to the sophomore punter. Again, Connor Schutte for flipping the field and getting them to start their possession. First and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 16-yard line. Okay, got all theirs in. Now we get ours in from this last possession, so stay <laughs> at it, John. <Josh. laughs> That's right. Angleton Wildcats now doing the design run, and Big Burr there for the stop behind the line of scrimmage. you got to give a shout-out as well to number 46, Christian Cockrell, I believe. That is Christian Cockrell, the senior linebacker, doing a great job getting upfield, and Big Burr just laying down on that quarterback behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to bring him for a yard loss. It'll bring up second and 11, 8.45 and ticking here in the third quarter. Cedar Park on top, 35-14. to 14. So the Wildcats play action, dropping back to pass, looking towards his left, pump faking. Still got a lot of time, but stepping up into the pocket, avoiding some pressure to his left side. Christian Cockrell stepping up, and Jake McAnally there Big game. for some pursuit. And the quarterback wrapped up for a minimal gain of only two yards. It'll bring up third and nine. All right, I finally got my machine back up to date. So, yeah, I have your pencil back. Nice job doing that. We're down to 8-10 of the third. Lead still intact at 35-14. And Josh has narrated them to a third and about nine at the 17 left hash. Two receivers either side. Standard 3-4 defense for Cedar Park. Ewell takes a snap. Rolling right. Looking, looking under some pressure. Throws it far down the sideline and out of bounds. Incomplete. Fourth down, and Cedar Park's going to get the ball back. Yeah, great job by Cedar Park, especially on the back end. Those defensive backs doing a great job going step for step. But, again, it's that defensive pressure. It's easy to make a throw in practice. It's easy to make a throw in seven-on-seven seven when you don't have a live rush. But when you have the black rain front seven screaming down your neck, <laughs> I mean, God bless you for trying to get that off in time. And, I mean, he did, but, I mean, it's just off target, out of bounds by five yards. It's just hard to play against this black rain. So the first possession, a net of one yard. 
punt. 10, 20, 5, 6, 26 yards to the 43. Wow. Here are their punts tonight, Josh. Not terribly impressive. They did have a 54-yarder on a roll. The others, 25, 24, 26, 22. Unbelievable. I mean, and Cedar Park is, has been capitalizing on that field position. We've had one possession where we didn't capitalize that started in their in you know in their territory. But Cedar Park has done a great job offensively keeping their foot on the gas pedal. We haven't gotten in the end zone in the second half. We really need a touchdown right here. First and 10, 43 yards out, right hash. In Wildcat territory already. Trips to the left. Nobody right. Man in motion goes to the left as well. Tyree with a give, right side, tries to turn the corner, can't get there much. He's going to get maybe four to the 39, second down. That's still a tough run by Tyree, and he did a great job of not knowing that, I mean, not seeing that he didn't have any blockers out in front of him on the outside and just bursting to the sideline with that speed. They only give him three. Back to the line, yeah, so it's second and seven. Pell pulls it and, and keeps it himself to the right side, and he'll get to the 31. Yes. Should be good for the first. Wow, what a greatly timed pull by the senior quarterback and had everybody fooled again. Tyree thought he had the ball, but Josh <laughs> Pell knifed through for that big first. Back to the line. Tyree into it. And look at him carry. He's not a big guy, but he runs like a big guy. Ten-yard gain to the 22. A great job by Tyree just keeping those legs turning, especially when he gets contact. He was getting contact about five yards into the carry and pushed the pile for another four, setting him up with a short second and one. So here we are at second and one. Two receivers stacked, one behind the other to either side. An interesting formation. Pell back to throw, cross the middle. He hits Cody Marshall at the 12, turns towards the goal, and 5-1, oh, and he fumbles the ball and around the one, and they're going to pick it up. Let's see if they call him down. He almost looked wow. like he was already, si already sitting on his butt when he fumbled, but no. It's going to be a fumble. He got down to the 1 from the 32, so a 31-yard completion. But we end up fumbling it away at the 1. They recovered somewhere around the 5. An interesting play right there. Cody Marshall put a nice move after making that catch, getting back towards the middle of the field. And I thought he was going to get upfield, but it looked like that trailing tacker might have just punched Reached that ball. punched it out. So Adrian Ewell brings his Wildcats back out onto the field. Only from his own five, though. Right hash. Back to throw from the end zone. Throws out of the backfield to a guy. He's hit at the one, spins free, oh. but they get him anyway. Several guys had a shot at him, got him at about the two, so a loss of about three yards in the play. <laughs> Flirting very closely there with the safety right there. Great job by that swarming defense from the Black Rain and stopping that behind the line and I mean the Wildcats have to be very careful with how they proceed from here. Here come the Timberwolves defensively they are chomping at the bit for a scoring drive here first play they gained three yards balls at about, uh, about two and a half yards balls at about the two and a half three receivers left two right nobody in the backfield with Ewell and he takes it, and he's just going to run right through the middle, and he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, but no farther. Several defenders there. Josh, who made the stop? Uh, Big Murr was there staying at home and did a great job, as well as number nine, Dylan Hufford, getting up the bottom of that pile. Jake McAnally, as well as Ian Ferguson. I mean, that's crazy. We have defensive linemen, linebackers, and safeties getting in on the play. 5.35 now, left in the third quarter. That's only 17 and a half minutes left in this game. Up 21. Four-yard line. Third and about 12. Quarterback running along the goal line left side. Has some room. Is he going to get? He's going to get very close, but out of bounds short, I think, at the 14. Yeah, that Gained 10. He needed 11. Yeah, that ball stretch there at the end looked like it was enough, but that's just because his go-go go -go gadget arms that looks like. But they do bring on the punting unit. It's going to be about a fourth and three, so that is a very close and uh, that's very tight to try from your own 13-yard line. So the last two possessions, punting from well inside their 20, the Black Rain doing a whale of a job. 5-13 on a stopped clock. We're going to get the ball back with a 21-point lead here late in the third quarter. Snaps good, no pressure. There's the punt. 10-20, 5-13. 
Where's it going? Good 21, job. 21, 22 yard punt. Okay, we'll take that. And we were talking about their punts a moment ago. They add a 22 yarder to it. And outside of the, the good roll they got on the 50, excuse me, 54 yarder, another five punts, they're averaging 23.8. That's insane. I mean, it, and that's just creating field position opportunities for Cedar Park's offense, and they've capitalized in that last possession, really trying to get into the end zone for their first time in the second half, and Cody Marshall just coughing it up. Now the Black Rain did a good job holding up. Let's go ahead and get one yeah. to Cody Marshall. Let's do it again. He'll hold on to this one. Same receiving formation with two guys stacked one behind the other wide to either side. This time's a give to the running back. And, boy, they just can't do much with Tyree. Should have been no gain. He's going to get about three. Yeah, finding a way to, to, you know, get those tough earned yards. And this running back core, it's a three-headed monster that started last year with Kevin Adams as a junior, Tyree Nicholson, and Gavin Mundell as sophomores. It's incredible. This time a throw complete <gasps> to Gruyano. He dropped it. He was running free in the middle of the field at about the 20. And I think he probably was thinking of pay dirt a little too early, too. Yeah, Nick Gruyon was already thinking about his touchdown celebration right there and did a great job beating his man. And Josh Pell, the perfect read. You could not have read that play more perfectly. Third and about seven and a half. The snap. Back to throw is Pell. Good protection. Drifting to the right. Throws to the right. <laughs> Complete to Nichols to about the 19. That should be enough for the first. That was an incredible play. And Josh Pell and... Grant Nichols, that chemistry that they've created through the last couple of games, and right there just throwing a ball that only Grant Nichols could get. They're going to say oh. to the 20, this time stopped in the backfield, and that is Kevin Adams, Lee. loss of about two. Yeah, Kevin Adams was trying to dodge a, bl uh, a tackler two yards behind the line of scrimmage and just got caught for a Sioux string tackle. He doesn't get caught many times on that one, so... I know he's wanting to you know, chomping at the bit to get another opportunity. And, again, last game, Kevin Adams got loose out of the backfield for a reception. Would love to see him get a catch in space. Empty backfield. Pell, quarterback draw right through the middle. Ooh. He goes through a guy, puts his head down, and he gets to about the 16. It's going to be a gain of seven. Ooh. That was my QB1. Yeah, one. One. My QB1 took a hit right there at the end of that play, and, Still a great job for Josh Pell navigating through traffic to find a way to get us into a third and medium. Pell becomes our leading rusher in the game on that carry with 54 yards now. So far, five for nine on third downs. Up to the line, and they're going to change something. Two receivers to each side. Adams in the backfield with Pell. 16-yard line, third down. Back to throw is Pell. Looking left. Good protection. Now looking right. Throwing over the middle into the end zone, but too deep. That was covered anyway, so it's fourth down. I love the vision from Josh Pell. He located Houston Molinaro and tried to direct him towards that back line, but that was just too far out of bounds and unfortunate for them to not be able to connect on that because they did a great job with that chemistry and locating and finding the open spot. But Fourth and six from the 16. Marshall will hold, put down the tee at about the 23, so a 33-yarder for Raylan Barr. Right between the hash marks, a straight kick. Snap good, hold good, kick is on its way. It's got plenty of distance, and it's good. 3.06 left in the third. Cedar Park stretches their lead to 24 points, now up 38-14. We'll be right back with more Timberwolf football. In the battle for barbecue supremacy, Warriors pit prime meats, secret sauces, and recipes against one another. Yet one champion stands alone. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue in the modern day vernacular, where bad means good. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue has the worst barbecue in Texas. Welcome back to Cedar Park Football on the Vibe Live Network. The Willard of Oz here along with Brad Cohn, the V of the T, and Rosie Vega, our QA. We want to give a shout-out to Cecil Kokenauer holding it down back home in the Round Rock area as well as our main man, Miles Kokenauer. 
Shout you may be listening to. Yeah, shout out to the Coconauer boys. We're up 38-14, boys. 3.06 to go in the third. Cedar Park with 17 unanswered points in the last 11 game clock minutes. Here's the kick down to the six near side. Runs towards the middle of the field, and that's Goins, and he's going to be stopped at the Woo! 25, a 19-yard return. A great job by number 21 from the Cedar Park Timberwolves, Eli Lackey. My goodness, it looked like Goins was trying to spin out of a tackle, but Lackey just absolutely planted him into the turf. A nice physical play on special teams that, uh, you know, Goins is definitely heavily involved in the offense. He doesn't want to take those extra hits on special teams. Wildcats with only seven first downs. You give one statistically for a touchdown, of which they have two. That puts them at five. One of those was on a penalty. They've only earned four first downs that move the chains. Pass complete left side, immediately stuffed. It's going to be only a one-yard gain. Reed Vines closed for the hit. A great job by Reed Vines getting that slot receiver right out of the gate and just closing as soon as that quarterback delivers the football. A great open field tackle. Second down and nine from the 26. 235 and ticking. Two receivers to either side. One man in the backfield. He will back to throw. Looks over the middle. Throws over the middle. Completes it for the first down out to the 39. A gain of about 13 yards. And that's going to be the soft spot for the Cedar Park defense. They're getting great pressure up front, and then they're locking up on the outside. So if your receivers can make a move to get back towards the middle of the field, that's where they're going to be open. Quickly back to the line with that first down. Running to the right as Ewell rolling, rather. He's going to throw. Hits a man at the 50 in the open. Turns and gets down to our 44. It's a 5, 10, 15... 17-yard gain in the first down. A great job by the senior tight end, Dylan McLaughlin. Did a great job of just sitting down in the hole and not over-pursuing with the quarterback, just sitting right in between the corner and the linebacker. Now back to throw Ewell. Throws out to the flat on the left side. Trying to tiptoe around some people. Gives a stiff arm. He's going to get enough yardage, perhaps, for the first down before he's knocked out of bounds around the 35. Let's see they put him. At the 36, so a gain of nine was Goins, I believe. Yeah, they marked him just short, and it was a great job by Michael Putney coming up and make a very physical play, and he wasn't going to be able to, to make the play and stop him short, but he still sacrificed his body. That's what we need from this Timberwolf defense. Three to the right, one to the left. Ewell, give, running back, change his direction, try to go left. There's nothing there. That goes back to the middle, nothing there either. Murray Robinson and friends with the stop, a loss of three on the play, back to the 39. And that was a great job. Again, everybody over-pursuing and staying at home on the backside. A great job by the Cedar Park defense playing collectively team defense. They've had a good possession. They've moved some chains. We're here quickly to a third and four. Big down for Cedar Park. Running right is Ewell. He may have the first down. He is short of it, I think. I think he's short. Cedar Park, I believe. Let's see who was that. That was uh, Case and Cave. Brought up from the JV. In on the stop. Cockrell was there as well. Game gotta two, stay at home. Down. Do not fall for the hard count. You gotta watch that football right here. Don't give him a free possession. And they're going. Oh, he's short! He's short! He is well short! Just gets back to the line. It was Ewell just tried to jump the line from the shotgun formation. The blocking didn't do anything to the Black Rain D-line, and Murray and friends put a stop to him again. And it was just interesting with how much offensive power they have, especially with Goins. That Goins is a great... I don't like their fourth down calls. <laughs> yeah, their fourth down calls, they're not doing a great job of getting towards the outside. They're trying to go in between the tackles, and if you're going to try to do that against Big Burr and Big Ian Burr. Ferguson and Ian... Ferguson and Brendan Payne and Jake McAnally. It's just not going to work out for you. It's going to be very hard to get those. And Cedar Park with a very timely turnover on downs to get the ball back up 38-14. to 14. Man down for the Wildcats, so stoppage of place. Number 55, Jake Etheridge, junior offensive linesman. And they'll tend to him. And Josh, let's take a break and get a commercial on there. When we come back, Cedar Park will have the football. Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott and White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Box Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete. Spalding, 
and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities. Cedar Park with the ball, first and 10 there, 36, near the left hash. Northbound for only 56 more seconds here in the third quarter. Two receivers right, one left. Pell turns, gives to the running back. A good hole up the middle, 45, 46, 47. And once again, that was Gavin Mundell with his second carry of the night. First one that won the touchdown. Yeah, great job by Gavin Mundell. And he had an opportunity to break that towards the sideline, but decided to get north and south and get an extra three to four tough earned yards. 12 yards on that carry in the first down. Mundell, I was watching him while Josh had a great fake, pulled it out of him, gets seven yards, goes out of bounds at the 46-yard line across midfield, second down. I mean, Josh Pell just looks so comfortable in this offense Jeez. in the playoffs. It looks like he's making all the right decisions. A great play right there. Quickly back to the line. Same formation. Pell this time gives to the running back. Looks like it's Mundell Ooh, again. Short. And he needed three and got two. I think that's a 22. Let's make sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be third and one. Interesting. And they have the opportunity to run this out to the end of the quarter and design a good fourth and one play. Oh, excuse me, it's should. third down? Yeah, it's third down. Okay. So then I would take the time, go ahead and take this to the end of the quarter. And I think that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Ten seconds or 11. Somebody's called a timeout. Huh. Well, I don't know who would have done that. <laughs> Oh, that's 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 terrible. Let's see who they bring a timeout off the field on. Uh, both teams are signaling fourth quarter, but <laughs> it looks like well, we might have had a timeout. Well, and now they're running it. I think the stop was wrong. They, they did not d subtract from the three timeouts in, in either column. That's what I was looking for to see who might have called one. We are going to the fourth quarter. We'll be right back in just a minute. Oh, it's so In the battle for barbecue supremacy, warriors pit prime meats, secret sauces, and recipes against one another. Yet one champion stands alone. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, in the modern day vernacular, where bad means good. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue has the worst barbecue in Texas. Welcome back, Cedar Park Football, Pipe Live Network, Brad Cone, Josh Willard, Rosie Big is our QA. Cedar Park with a third and one going southbound now, left to right on your laptop. Keyboard, 12 minutes left in the game. We start the fourth quarter. Third and a little less than a yard. Two receivers right, nobody left. There's a wing back on the left. Pell claps, and they're going to change the player. by stands up and looks to the sideline. And it's third down. Gilbert Pedraza, Coach Q, several other people motioning. We don't know who the hot one is. Third and less than a yard. The snap. Pell runs by himself left side, turns the field. He has the first down a little bit more inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. I mean, a beautifully designed play. You get Kevin Adams out in a hurry, lead blocking, and Josh Pell with his football IQ just knows when to put his foot in the turf and get north and south and did a great job right there. I mean, he probably should have been Pushed out of bounds right at the sticks. He got an extra four. Got six all together for the first down. 22nd of the game. And we were at their 38 left hash. Leaning towards the short side of the field. Adams with the give. Not a lot of blocking for Kevin. He gets what he can, which is a couple to the 36. Yeah, not much going right there for Kevin. And we're just going to need to rely on him to go ahead and put this game away with 1140 and ticking in the ball game up on top. 38 to 14 here in the second round playoffs. I'm telling you, this 5-5 five five Cedar Park team, I, it, it, this is incredible, Brad. I want a bunch of 3- and 4-yard carries that don't go out of bounds all the way to the end zone here to burn away a lot of this time. Second down. 36-yard line. Play action fake. Back to throw his pal. He's going deep down the right side. Oh! Had a man there. Oh, he almost one-handed intercepted wow. that. Wow. Threw it a little short and almost got a pick inside the five. And, I mean, Houston Molinaro had his man beat by two to three steps. I thought Josh Pell put that on the money. I did, too. It left his hand. That was great closing speed by that cornerback and almost made a sports center top ten interception right there. <laughs> yeah, but by the grace of the football gods, we got a third down. So third down and about seven, maybe seven and a half. Pell with a snap, back to throw. Looking right side, stretch out, 
Did he make the catch? 11. Yes, he did. Grant Nichols at the 18 for the first down. My goodness, Mr. Reliable. That is officially his nickname. He's and he really, really turned into a good receiver. He has come into the fold and just been an excellent target for Josh Pell right there diving for that first down effort. Great job by the senior tight end. My goodness. 19 yards on the play to the 19. Trips to the short side. That's the right side. One man, Adams. Sprints out, to out alone to the left. That may have confused them. Nobody was going out there with them. And uh, that could have been a big play for us. And the Angleton coach saw that and called a timeout quickly. We'll stay here. 10.54 left in the game. 38-14 Cedar Park up 24 in a second round playoff game on the road in Houston. I mean, it, and just driving down here, the conversations that we had, this is, you know, not necessarily an outcome that we were planning on. It was one that we were hoping for. Uh, but just Cedar Park, and we were nervous about which team would show up, and the Black Rain immediately showed up, but the Black Rain did their job. you got to give hats off and the flowers to the offense tonight. They've done a great job of putting together possessions early in the game that ended in touchdowns that really put a lot of pressure on the Angleton Wildcats to chase early. And so just very excited for this offensive production for these guys to have this success deep into the season. So what were we saying? We were saying cut down on turnovers. They have. No interceptions tonight, knock on wood. Saying don't miss tackles. And they haven't, generally speaking. Right. Um, you know, the, the, you do the things that we were highlighting there, and this is a win. Sure enough, it's a 24-point win. This is the kind of margin they could have had against Johnson last week if they hadn't had uh, four turnovers and five drop touchdown passes. My goodness, this is the round rock score, too. Great dish. Dish off from Adams to Nichols, and he is tripped up after gaining six or seven down to the 13. Nice pass to the left side after some play action faking. A great job by Josh Pell, quickly taking his first option open in the progression and dishing it out early so Grant Nichols has an opportunity to make that man miss. Nine times out of ten, he does. Nichols now eight catches, 129 yards. Adams running left side. Stiff arm in the ten, the five. No. Down the sideline as he get in. No. Oh. Out of bounds inside the five. They're going to mark him at about the two. A great run by Kevin Adams, bouncing that to the outside. And I knew that we were going to need to see that later in this game. Tyree and Kevin Adams have been a great job of, you know, following those doughboys up the middle. But eventually they got to trust that speed and know that they have the ability to get to the outside. Guyon far to the right. Weapon X uh, to the left, weapon X to the right. The snap, give, into the line, Adams. Oh, no, that's an excuse me. I was looking to the wrong place. I was watching Adams. With it. Pell's fakes are getting better and better. It was an incomplete <laughs> pass to Gruy on a slant from the left side, right at the goal line. Flew a little bit behind him. But his fakes are getting so good, he's faking me out. <laughs> he's gotten us a lot tonight, and that's always good. We want our quarterback to fake us out. That's yeah, always good. Give us a hard time. Make us have a hard time knowing who's got the ball, and that's probably a good offense. Second and goal from the five. Let's get it in. we got to punch these in. Adams in the backfield with Pell. Snap. Gives to him, runs right up the middle and into the end zone for the touchdown from five yards out. Kevin Adams, first touchdown of the night. Oh, so happy for Kevin Adams getting into the end zone completely untouched. And again, shout out to those Doughboys. They've done a great job. 44 points on the board right now. Shout out to those Trench Dogs getting it done up front, giving us the ability to put these possessions down the field not only for field goals, but for touchdowns. Big shout out to the Doughboys. And 25 first downs so far tonight, 32 <laughs> last week. That's 57 first downs in less than two games. I thought they were going to block that point, <laughs> yeah. but he got he got it through. 10-16 left in the game. Cedar Park's lead now 45-14. to We'll be right back. In the battle for barbecue supremacy, warriors pit prime meats, secret sauces, and recipes against one another. Yet one champion stands alone. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue in the modern-day vernacular, where bad means good. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue has the worst barbecue in Texas. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. 
Total offense right now, as we just started the fourth quarter, 471 to 231. <laughs> Woo! Pushing oh 500 God. yards offense, and a third of their offense is on one play. That's insane. 45-14 Timberwolves. It's like the good old days. Are they back already? Here's the kick from the Norwegian Nightmare. High down to the 10. They feel it. Come right back up the seam. A little bit of a room there. They're going to get out over the 30 to about the 34. 24-yard return. First and 10 for Angleton from their 34. And have to give a quick shout-out to Cecil Kokenauer listening back home. He just messaged me and said, man, this is a beatdown. Peaking at the right time. Yeah. That's exactly right. We, this Cedar Park team is starting to come into their own for sure. First and 10 Angleton there, 34. Left hash. Going right to left, northbound. 10.08 left in the game. Down to Cedar Park by 31. Three to the right, two to the left. Back to throw. Ewells under some pressure. He's going to run up the middle, gain some yardage before he's hit and taken down by Vines. It's about a four-yard gain to the 38 second down. Again, and it's just these quarterbacks dropping back and trying to find these receivers with, I mean, you've just never truly faced this black rain pass rush. And if we're able to get home with three defensive down linemen, if we have these outside linebackers just waiting at the line of scrimmage, you're not going to be able to bail. Rolling now, Adrian Ewells to the right, throws it a little low and behind his target, but they're going to say he caught it? That was a good catch. Good that catch was at about the 48, 10-yard gain in the first down. Yeah, number 18 for the Wildcats, looking a lot like Grant Nichols for this quarterback, being a very reliable target for him tonight, especially on third downs. 10 yards, a pass is thrown behind and below him, and he made the catch anyway. Nice job. 10th first down of the game. This time into the line with the running back. Not much doing there. Going to give him two to the 48. Second down. Deshaun Thomas. Yeah, not much going right there. Good job by the Black Rain, especially Ian Ferguson, number 90. He was on that play side of the play and did a great job of taking that tackle outside and fighting for outside contain and running into that ball carrier. Great job. D-line doing a good job tonight. They go into it and don't come out. Play action fake back to throw his Ewells under pressure. Goes right. He's going to end up running it. Getting a few yards. Coming back to the middle. He's got some room. The 30. The 25. The 21 yard line before he is stopped. A big gainer. It's going to end up being 10, 20, 32 yards. Yeah, shout out to George Wheeler and Garrett Gasly staying at home on the back side. I mean, they could have quit on that play when it looked like the quarterback was dead in the rights right at the line of scrimmage, but they stayed at home, stayed focused, and were able to wrap up that quarterback in the open field, not giving up a touchdown. He only had 37 yards rushing, rushing on the game. He got 32 right there. This time in the line with a rush, maybe a yard to the 20. Oh, my god! backwards, and his helmet ripped off. Yeah, number six, com hat coming off, and Mick, Big Murr right there. That was a unreal hit at the end of that play. I'm going to give him a yard on that one. Only one yard. I don't have a six on my roster. Okay, interesting. Second down and nine from the 20. Left hash. Low snap. Gets it. Oh Running right. Grabbed as he throws it incomplete. Who was the pressure by there, Josh? That pressure looked like it was n from number 20, Jackson Fortney, the All junior right. linebacker. And love calling these underclassmen here in the playoffs. We're going to need these guys coming back next season. And Jackson has really come into his fold. He's so fast. He is. I mean, and he's not necessarily one of the biggest and strongest linebackers looking like from up here. But he's got that low leverage. He can get out into the flats and cover as well as pressure the quarterback. Three receivers right. Two left for Ewell. Takes a snap, fades back. Throws right side. Has a man at the goal line. Hits him for the touchdown. 20 yards on the play to number 25. And they're playing the sign for them. Mylik Woods. And they draw a little closer. Draw a little closer. That one hurts right there to give up right there. But again, Shout out to the Cedar Park offense and giving us this lead to, to work with here in the fourth quarter. We're still up uh, 24 points. Just how blessed are we with this team right now? doesn't hurt so bad when you've built that kind of a cushion. Kick up, and it's good. Eight minutes exactly left to play. A junior high quarter, 45-21 Cedar Park. We'll be right back. 
a premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or mungiarealestate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A. Welcome back. Cedar Park Football, the Vipe Live Network, Brad Cohn, Josh Willard, Rosie Boga, the QA. Eight minutes exactly left in the game. Cedar Park's lead narrowed a little bit, 45-21. They'll be returning the kickoff left to right. Their kick will be kicking into the wind here, what slight wind there is. Onside. Oh! The onside try. Do they come it's up there? And it looks like they've got oh, it. They oh, they Cedar Park got it. Good. Wow. I saw one of our guys on it. We didn't know if he kept it. I think that may have been number 25. Uh, maybe it's 26, Mac Powell. Max Powell. I mean, uh, that was a great timed onside kick right there, and they've been kind of luring Cedar Park into it with their different kicking formations tonight and motion yeah. before the, the kick, so a good heads-up play almost got Cedar Park slipping. So Pell will bring them out with good field position, only 52 yards away at our 48 left hash. 7.58 on the clock. First and 10. Two receivers right, one left. Kevin Adams in the backfield with Pell. I want to just run it down the field three or four yards at a shot. There's Adams. Oh, my God. Puts his head down, and he gets four. That's a good start. <laughs> he got five. He got five. <laughs> wow, he got six almost. No, he got five to the 47. My goodness, Kevin Adams. I'm just so happy that he is on our team. It's one of those guys where... My goodness, I would never want to get in front of him and try to tackle. <laughs> now, is that Kevin Adams or was that Tyree? Well, I, think I, heard, I thought I heard the announcer up here. Okay, I, didn't, Adams I, I didn't know if Adams checked out because he's still over here on the sideline. Well, it must have been Tyree. How was, I mean, whoever it was. I, mean, I think you're right. I think Ball carrier Tyree. A or B, both of them are going to give you the business. Well, I'm going to give it Tyree. And they're going back to him again. This time he runs right side, ah. turns around, spins. He'll only get a yard or so, just shy of the 45. Third down. Yeah, not much going right there. Tried to reverse it backfield. A, a wise cut by Tyree, but just got wrapped up and spun down right at the line of scrimmage for a gain of one. A big third down play right here. And, again, it's not necessarily trying to, you know, pat the sto- yeah, scoreboard. We're, we're in the clock. We can dr- drown this clock, clock out for Inside real. Inside seven minutes now, 648 and ticking third and three. Pell, play action fake, throws left side, has a man, complete nickels, but he's not going to gain anything out of it, and they stop the clock, so not anything that we wanted. Uh, they're keeping that clock moving here. Are they really? And Okay, I, I'm, uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm advising that they continue to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth down. Need to run this clock all the way down to two before they snap for this punt. 478 yards of offense now for Cedar Park. That's unbelievable. Pretty and nice just, night. Uh, so proud of these guys for never quitting on the game plan. And for them to come into the playoffs at 5-5, five and five, they could they could have been down on themselves easily. They could have mailed it in, and they didn't. Good on them. Kick is away. Great job. 10, 20, 30. Wow. And out of bounds after 32 yards at about the 13. A great job again by the sh- by the sophomore. Felt some pressure right there too. Had to get that off pretty quick and delivered a nice punt that flips the field inside the red zone. I'm telling you, this sophomore's money. First and ten, Angleton. Uh, that's interesting where they're putting the ball at the twenty since it went out at the thirteen. Yeah, yeah there they go. Now they're moving them back. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say that was not a touchback. <laughs> If it goes out of the 13, you get the ball of the 20. <laughs> New football rule. <laughs> My goodness. 45-21 to 21 for the Cedar Park Timberwolf team right now here in the second round. And they announce a penalty on the receiving team. And now they're marking that off. I didn't hear what the penalty was, but it's half the distance I mean, to the goal. It's a big one. It puts them at the 6. Maybe the 7. Six and an half. unsportsmanlike or something yeah. talking to the ref, but... 
Yeah, there wasn't any extracurriculars going on on that play, so I, it must have been away from the football. First penalty of the second half for them. 5.53 left. Ewell's back to throw at the oh goal line. Oh, he's going to They almost had him as a safety. He's running right. Plenty of room at the 10. He spins out of somebody's grasp, but somebody else gets him at about the 12. And You're right. That should have been a safety. They held while he was in the end zone. That was Christian Cockrell out there at that outside linebacker that made the open field tackle. That quarterback could have sprung Whitaker. for a big first down, yeah. but I'm with you, Brad. It looked like Brendan Payne and, he, and Big Murr got held right at the goal line in, inside the, the, the end zone. If you're holding when the quarterback is in the end zone, that's safety. Snap to Eels, gives to the running back, runs right side. This is six again, who's not on my roster. Big Murr and friends <laughs> stop him after a gain of about a yard. Shout out number 47 as well from the Timberwolves, getting his hat in on the play. Don't have a number on him. Uh, excuse mm. me, 47, I think that's 42 from this line of vision. That's That'd be, be Reed Vines. That'd be a Reed Vines. That, too, looked like a seven. But Reed Vines and Murray Robinson there collectively for the stop right at the line, forcing him into a big third and three. We could stop at Bucky's on the way home. Come on, man. We can do that for sure. I get some nuggets. 447. There's a snap on third and two. Right <laughs> outside. They'll have the first down and more, the 30-yard line, cutting inside to the 34. A nice gain of 20 yards for Ewell. A great job, and George Wheeler doesn't get credit with that tackle, but he fought for outside contain, forcing that quarterback to cut back into the middle of the field, not giving him the sideline to run down. So George Wheeler didn't get credit for that tackle, but we got to give him praise on that play. Defense did a great job of stuffing them. Very little yards in the first half. They've given up yards, but not a lot of points here in the second. Uh, Ewells with six more yards would give them two 100-yard rushers. That doesn't happen very often against Cedar Park. Back he goes to throw. Flushed from the pocket. Throws right side, has a man wide open, and drops the ball at our 45-yard line on the right sideline. Thank you very much. Yeah, he's made, uh, that receiver's made a ton of catches in traffic behind his, uh, you know, frame and readjust to make it big catches. That one was completely wide open, and those are sometimes the toughest ones to bring down. Uh, so an incomplete pass, unfortunately, brings him to a second and ten. 4-10 to go, Brad. We're almost on the victory ride home. Almost. Warm up the bus. 34-yard <laughs> line, right hash. This is so exciting. Two men split left, one right. Play action fake. Looking left. Looking left. Good. <laughs> Pass protection. It breaks down, and they're going to sack him. Murray was there and a lot of other guys. Uh, Ian Ferguson there, bringing, helping the quarterback off of the turf right there. Just a suffocating pass rush right there. Defensive end did a great job pushing up field, collapsing that pocket, forcing the quarterback to step up into the teeth of that defensive line. I mean, it was just completely textbook. The Black Rain, thank you so much for spoiling us. Fourth sack of the night, tenth sack of the playoffs. <laughs> I think they only had 12 or 13 the whole season. Right. Back to throw is Ewell's. Throws deep, right down the middle. Nobody there except one of our guys, and even who overthrows him, second down. Great job over the top. Luke Kaharski just playing center field, not letting anything get behind him right there, and bringing the punting unit on, fourth and 15, trailing by 24. That's 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 almost a conceding victory right yeah, there. Yeah, you got to think if you're an Angleton senior on offense, that may have been your last snap of your high school career. Cedar Park just needs a probably two first downs to run the rest of this clock off. Fourth and the outskirts of Dallas <laughs> from their own 29. Fourth and Waller. Right hash. <laughs> <laughs> we got a guy at the 41. Here's the kick. Dang, that was a nice boot and a flag. 34-yard punt. Got a return. He's coming back to this side. He gained five. He lost ah! it all. <laughs> he threw it at the 36, ran left, got up to about the 41, then came back to the 36, going to the middle. That's where he ended up. So there's a 25, 30-yard run for zero return. Well, I'm sorry, but I, I trusted Houston right there. I trust his vision and the way that he got upfield on that opposite sideline, then reversed it back. I thought people were going to over-pursue. Uh, but just a great job, open field tackled by the Angleton Wildcats, and still waiting to see what this flag is. But you got to think that Cedar Park, let's line it up, give it to number two, let's run this clock out. Block for him. Punt returns are interesting this year. We Going into the playoff game, we only had five punt returns all year, and four of them were in one game. For whatever reason, we're just letting balls go, fair catching them, whatever. Tonight, that's our first punt return, and it went for zero yards. <laughs> so it's kind of like we have no punt returns. 
man, just excited all the way around. And even on the special team side of the ball, Connor Schutte getting it done, reversing the field, but then also got to give a shout out. What is this? Are they coming back to replay this? Yep. Looks like we lined up offsides, I think he said. Yep. Five yard penalty in there. It saying. was fourth and 15, so it's still fourth and 10. <laughs> They'll still kick and gain five yards in exchange. Although, look at where the ball was. It was, what, the 30. 35 yard line. All right, if we get better than the 35 yard line out of this, and I think we could, <laughs> they shouldn't have taken the penalty. Yeah, it, it, and again, that kind of goes back to your rant the other week about taking timeouts on delay of games. Yeah, I mean, little not penalties. Not understanding the value of things. Yeah. yeah. It's not, there, there's no value of that five yards. Especially if. The value is part, if they they part of the guy go backwards on a punt return. And that's another. Oh, they did it again. He's going to give him another five. Oh, my gosh. Well, now we're probably not going to end up at a 35. Okay. Ah! Oh! <laughs> they take those yards right back from him. <laughs> a little yin and yang. So we're still looking at the 30. If we're better than 35, they should have never taken the first penalty. It's still the same deal. And now a good chance we're better than 35 because Molinaro's standing on the 40. Oh, my goodness. Meanwhile, no seconds have tipped off. <laughs> That's what we're wanting. We're ready to head to Bucky's. Yeah, again, shout out to Rosie Vega for hanging out with us. Here's the kick. 10, 20, 30. 31 yard punt, fair card at the 39, so we gained four yards out of them <laughs> taking that penalty. <laughs> oh, thank goodness we have you to, to let us know about that. <laughs> and we now officially do not have one punt return for zero yards. <laughs> we still have no punt returns. There we go. <laughs> I mean, but now Timberwolves taking over first and ten from our own 39-yard line. 3:08 to go here in the ball game on top. 35 or 45, excuse me, to 21. I mean, I, I I'm almost speechless for this offensive production tonight. This has been tremendous. Uh, We're pushing is, 500 yards. This is what we've wanted all season. We've had a few games where we've had that, but there's always been stuff misfiring. When the offense is on, the defense is off. Right. When the defense is on, the offense is off. Into the line now with a running back, and that looks like Ty or Gavin Mundell. He's going to get about three, maybe four, to the 43. Again, we're just trying to drown out that clock. Good job by Gavin. Ball security getting up north and south and plowing forward for as many yards as he can, and they do give him four. Inside three minutes now at 2.42 and ticking. Run this clock. We've got 2019 on the shot clock. Run it down to two before you snap it. Absolutely. I know yeah, it's, it's, it's against an offense that runs tempo a lot. It's against their instincts. you got to do it. How many times have we been in this position all year? We need to Eight, run the clock out. Enjoy seven, this. Six. <laughs> they snap it with about six. This time they give to the running back going left side. I think that's Mundell again. But unfortunately, he kept going to out of bounds to gain yards. It's more important to go down and <laughs> gain clock. This young guy still not understanding some of the dynamics of the game. No gain on the play, and it stopped the clock. Yeah, it stops that clock at 218, and just putting off the in inevitable Bucky's run. <laughs> Actually, he loses a yard. Third and eight. He loses two yards. Getting some feedback. 218. There. It might be your phone there. Sounds like phone noise. From the 41. 218 on the stop clock. Needs to be a first down. Back to throw is Pell. He's going to run. New quarterback. He should have the first down. Yeah, he's got it. That's got nice it. Nice job. Run of 10 yards on the play. Was that Bernard? I love yeah. that, though. Yeah, Bernard. Bernard. There is no reason for Josh Pell to be in this game right now. That was the first carry of Gavin Bernard's career in what could have been his last game. Wow. That was a great job, and again, just keeping Josh Pell off the field. This game is yeah. in the bag. No need to, to force anything and hurt anybody. Again, some scores around the area. Uh, right now in the third quarter, Katie Paytow over Maynard, 51-16. to 16. Predictable. Bernard turns, gives, running back, right side. I think Mundell again, and he'll get to the 45. Yeah, Mundell. So a gain of about four on the play clock, ticking through 129. Manville going to take out our district champion, Weiss, right now 41-31 with 48 oh. seconds to go in the game. I thought Weiss had a good shot at that. I really thought that they had the offense to compete with them, and 
We know we should have been wise, so we're right there with Manville. Right now, Barbers Hill on top of freaking A&M Consolidated. Yes! 28-27 in the start of the fourth. 105, 104, and kicking here, second and six from there, 45, near the right hash. Gavin Bernard leading the team. Gavin Mundell, the running back. And Gavin gives oh. to Mundell, who goes to the 40 for five. Needed six for the first down, 49 seconds of ticking. Shoot. That almost is your last play. We got one more play. Let's run it in. Going to have to run one more, yeah. Just 29 run. on the shot clock, 40 on the game clock. Run that 29 down. Yeah, might as well. It's third and one from the 40. We're going to end up, we are right now, don't kneel. Well, I don't stat a kneel. That's okay. We don't need to lose yards either because we're right at 500 yards. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, don't do anything like that. At come least on. get to the 40, get back to the 40. Give it to Gavin. Block for him, too. Or which Gavin? Oh, oh my gosh. This one. I saw some <laughs> weird motion. I saw some weird motion. Oh, man. Brutal. All start on us. Brutal. A penalty with 15 seconds left. Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm about to say, against the defense, he said at first. I, I, I can hear him, but I know you all can't. I keep forgetting that you guys can't hear what he's saying. False start penalty on Cedar Park. It's, uh, they're sixth for 38 yards. Move them back to the 45 with 15 seconds on the clock. Now, they could kneel here and we keep our 500 yards. You don't stat kneeling plays, even though they kind of lose yardage. I would kneel here just to risk not having somebody tweak an ankle or something on a useless play. And the referee's coming over to talk to Coach Q about something. See if I can get my binos up and read his lips. He says, that Bucky's over there open 24 hours, right? <laughs> Coach says, yeah, I think we're going to stop there. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, and we were already talking to the, the press box guy over here for representing Waller ISD. He came over at halftime and said, so we'll just go ahead and book you all for this, you know, room for next week. And so based on how everything's going to pan out, it looks like Angle, or excuse me, Katie Paytow going to take care of Maynard. So we could be right back here next week. They ran 10 seconds off because of the stipulations and rules of that penalty. So there it goes. We don't even run another play. The referee started the clock. It goes to zero quickly, and Cedar Park wins. A couple of brief commercials, Josh. We'll come back and wrap it up and get out of here. In the battle for barbecue supremacy, warriors pit prime meats, secret sauces, and recipes against one another. Yet one champion stands alone. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue in the modern day vernacular where bad means good. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue has the worst barbecue in Texas. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years. Just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lake Line. Open Friday through Sunday, every weekend. At Wafed Bank, formerly Washington Federal, working together isn't new for us. We've been awarded America's Best Big Bank by Newsweek. From digital options, touchless transactions, and increased nonprofit contributions to help our neighbors, we're here for you. Our bankers approved more than 9,000 PPP loans to keep small businesses going during the pandemic. Wafed Bank is a local bank and portfolio lender with more than 200 branches in eight states to serve you. 24-7 online and mobile banking with mobile check deposit, over 32,000 ATMs, free checking, Wafed Bank, your local bank for personal and business banking at wafedbank.com or 800-324-9375. Welcome back. Cedar Park, a 45-21 win here in the area round, and we've just heard the announcement. They'll play Peto. They beat Maynard tonight by a large margin, just like we won here, and it will be right back here a week from today, a day game, a 1 o'clock start Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, round three against Payton. We'll bring you that one as well. Here are the numbers. Cedar Park, 26 first downs. Angleton, 12. More than doubled them there. Rushing, 
should have more than doubled them. They had uh, 96 yards of their 201 on two of their 41 carries. So about half of their rushing yards on two of their 41 carries. Uh, Cedar Park 47 for 233, a nice 4.96 average, almost five yards of carry. Josh 16 to 31 through the air for 267, a pair of scores, 51.61 completion percentage, 8.61 yards for attempt. They went 13 to 23, a touchdown, 120 yards, 56.52 yards for complete or completion percentage rather, and 5.22 yards for attempt. Total offense, Cedar Park 500, Angleton. 321 score by quarters us 14 nothing in the first 21 14 in the second three nothing in the third and a 7 7 tie in the fourth i'm not going to give you their numbers they're pretty boring <laughs> our numbers yeah kevin adams 13 for 60 a 4.6 average and five yard touchdown Josh Pell, leading rusher tonight, 11 for 67, a 6.1 average, touchdowns of 3 and 12 yards. Tyree Nicholson, nice yardage, a 5.0 average on 11 carries for 55 yards. Gavin Mundell, 7 for 32, a 4.6 average and a 6-yard touchdown. Marshall, 3 carries, 3 yards. Well, 1 carry for 6. Gavin Mundell, oh, I didn't put something in there right. Mundell had more than those carries. He had, uh, oh, you know what? I'm looking at the wrong Gavin. That's Bernard, one carry for 10 yards. We gave you Mundell, 7 for 32. Uh, Bernard played quarterback but didn't throw any passes. Pell all the throws, 16 for 31 for 267. Uh, three catches for Gruyon. Boy, it's good to have him back for 47 yards. Molinaro, one for six. Marshall, three for 84 and a 29-yard touchdown. Grant Nichols, receiver of the game. Nine for 130 and a five-yard touchdown. I mean, unbelievable offensive statistical numbers, and that's just something that we've really wanted to see carry over into this season after what we were spoiled with with Ryder in the storm for the past three years. And we've seen Josh Pell. We've known all the accolades that he's accumulated in seven-on-seven seven and through the offseason as a passer. And so seeing him come into the fold tonight, not only in the passing game, but giving great relief and timely rushes from the pocket uh, that the being the leading rusher tonight with two touchdowns on the ground, two touchdowns in the air. Josh Pell got it done completely uh, tonight, and it looked like he was just making all the right decisions tonight. It looked like he was throwing accurate balls. It looked like we had a few more drops than normal. Uh, but So I think Josh Pell, um, even though he's only at 51% completion percentage, I thought the stats and throws were definitely there tonight. Um, I thought he was, you know, 80% completion on, on his on-target throws. So I thought he did a great job tonight. And then the black rain, that's just mm. a, that's a typical black rain. So much pursuit tonight. Yes. And we didn't see all through the season. Well, it was there tonight. And Jake McAnally last week, we saw him spying that quarterback because Medina had the ability to run. And these quarterbacks tonight... Uh, number three, Adrian Ewells, had that ability to, to step up into the pocket and make big plays, but Jake McAnally and those linebackers did a great job containing, and again, those front defensive linemen just putting relentless pressure all night. Shout out to the back end for covering it up. I mean, it, this, this is Cedar Park football, and what we've been wanting and waiting to see all season, you, and I'm, I'm telling you, you get this team to run back against Round Rock and Vandergriff, completely different games. Hoisting the area round trophy right now down there with <laughs> Coach Deer, the big football, the big bronze football. Lots of happiness on those faces and in those voices down there, I'm sure. And I think, Josh, that, that Angleton is sitting over there watching this, and they're stunned. I think they thought they are going to come in here and win this game, and that that was a matter of fact. I think they looked over and saw Cedar Park, and it, yes, measurably, it's worst season in 18 years. Just kind of stumbled through the last part of district play. Uh, had to uh, go to double overtime to win by the skin of their teeth over a rookie school last year. I think they came in here and thought they are going to win this game by the kind of score that they ended up losing it by. Yeah, absolutely, and I think Cedar Park just, you know, being humbled and, you know, understanding their placement and understanding that they haven't been on top all season kind of gave them some gratitude coming into this game to not overlook any opponent and I was able to get onto the sideline before the game and I, I tried to go tell some of those key players that like this Angleton team has never seen you they don't respect you they don't know anything about you so they're going to give you their yep. best shot tonight so do not think that you can sleep on this team because they're ready as a last representative from their district, that upset in the first round, why, what do they have to lose, just like you guys tonight? And so if you come out and play Cedar Park football, uh, they're going to quit very quickly. And Cedar Park jumping out to that 14-0 lead right out of the gate. I mean, it was just 
it was reassuring and just comforting to see this offense produce and then the black rain back them up. I think one of the biggest lessons this team probably has learned this year is that the logo on our helmet doesn't make any tackles, throw any blocks, catch any passes. And once they realize that, that our past, our glorious past that we enjoy so much, isn't going to be worth a single point this year, they realize they had to work hard and do it themselves. And right now, they're a very good team. And shout out to Cecil Kokenauer, our producer at home right now with the boys, Miles and Avery, and listening. And, man, hey you're Miles. exactly right. Hey, Avery. We are peaking at the right time right now. And uh, just what a time to be a part of this Cedar Park community. All right, so the Cedar Park Timberwolves move on once again. A 45-21 win over Angleton tonight. Their 43rd playoff win in 57 playoff games. Cedar Park goes to 7-5, and five, and Angleton ends their season at 8-4. and four. This is the 209th all-time win for Cedar Park in 23 seasons of varsity football against just 76 losses. And since 2010, Timberwolf football now 139-25. and 25 overall. Next up for the Timberwolves, the third round, the Region 3 semifinals against Katie Pato, a very strong football program right here Friday, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll bring it to you live. This live broadcast of Cedar Park Timberwolf football on the Vipe Live Network was brought to you by Toyota Cedar Park, H-E-B, Rudy's Barbecue, Mungia Real Estate, Alzer's Barbecue, our touchdown sponsor, T.J. Lewis Real Estate, Army Ant Moving, Wofford Bank, and Santa Catarina Mexican Restaurant. Remember, Timberwolf Night in America, Tuesday night, Josh and I will have the national champion cheer captains on at 7.30 p.m. Central Time right here on the Vipe Live Network, live from Santa Catarina. For Vipe Live Media Director of Operations, Merle Bertrand. Communications Director, Christina Weber. Technical Support Officer, Sue Venkat. Our voiceover artist, Roland Ruiz. All the good folks at the Vipe Network and Flow Sports TV. Our QA tonight, Rosie Vega, and my longtime broadcast partner, Cecil Kokenauer, couldn't join us. And Josh Willard, who did. This is Brad Cohn signing off for Flow Sports TV and the Vipe Live Network.